Okay, so we have started and recording is in progress. Okay. Good evening. This is the June uh, second meeting of the Village of Mimarnock Board of Appeals, Zoning Board of Appeals. And we have our members here tonight. Brian Gladstein is here, Robin Kramer, and I'm Dave Newfell. Uh, Greta Hinney is a fourth member. She is not here today and the board is short a member, so we don't have a fifth member. We have our council, uh, Charles Gottlieb, who's on, and Alicia Moore from AKRF is our host tonight, running the Zoom. Um, <clears throat> bef our procedure is we have quite a few. We have four public hearings tonight. Um, one that's um, a continued one and the other three are new. That is, uh, we also have a lot of other business to do. So when your hearing is called, what I'm gonna ask is you please make your presentation. We have the paperwork. <clears throat> and if you want to speak to the public, by all means do so. Just ask that you please try to remain tight on the issues. We don't need to repeat everything because we otherwise we're not going to get through it. And we'll have to push some people back. We don't want to do that. Um, after the presentations, if the hearing is closed, <clears throat> there is no further discussion. And with the board's practices that in all likelihood, Nothing on tonight will be decided tonight. It will come on for the next meeting, which as of now is sometime in July. Um, now, if there's anyone I wanna just point out, if there's anybody here who does not wanna proceed because we only have three members on and you do need to have the vote of four members to pass. No, I mean, we, no. I'm sorry, we need, we need three. That's correct, I'm sorry, three to approve. So if you wanna have wait and present it to others, Although the other way it works is anyone who does vote, Greta, for example, she will review the video of this. So if there's anybody that wants to adjourn, please speak up now. And if not, we're gonna begin with our first hearing. Anyone raising their hand, Alicia? Uh, no, no. Okay. So the first no. hearing- Oh, is excuse me, I'm, I'm sorry. Sorry, there is somebody raising their hand. And who is that? Beverly Sherrod. Find out what application she's here on. So what application? Um, Good evening. I, can I can I promote her to talk? Yeah, I'm just I guess so. Unmute. Okay. Unmute. Ms. Sherrod, you are unmuted. And am I talking? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. I am here for the club, which I think is your first hearing. I'm not sure. Right. Okay. Um, okay. All right. Sure? We're not ready to start your hearing. Is that what you're asking about? Yeah, when, when you start that, I'm here to talk. So can okay. I put my hand down again without disappearing? Okay, you don't have to disappear. Fine. Okay. All right. So I assume there's no one here who wants an adjournment, correct? All right. So the first matter on tonight, just a moment, is uh, application 04 SP22, 700 South Barry, which is um, the Maranick Beach. Realty Group LLC for renewal of a special permit. And we have, there have been quite a few materials received on that uh, from different people. In the meantime, I'm not sure if the applicant has received it. I can go through what they are quickly. But uh, there are various emails we have received that are enumerated and listed online. Um, and I guess the first speaker is. The applicant is here by Beverly Sherrod, correct? You promote her or if she's already promoted, correct? Uh, yes, yes, you're promoted. Ms. Sherrod, are you the applicant? You're with Mamari? I, I am I am not the applicant. I am community member. Oh, okay. Well, let's let the app with the way our procedure I'm, will work. Yes. Is, no, no, no. I, I'm oh. just very eager, obviously. <laughs> okay, well, that's fine. You maintain your eagerness by all means. All right. We'll get to you. Okay. Is right. the applicant here? We have a. Uh, is anyone here from Maranick uh, Beach and Yacht Club? Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, Are you our Adam Wexstein? Correct. You're with the you're with the firm of uh, Hockerman, Torturella, and Wexstein. Oh, All right, and you represent the applicant. Correct. That is correct. Okay. And is there anybody else on your? Team, uh, Mr. Yes, Rick. that is correct also. Uh, Conrad Roncati, who's the president of the applicant. Okay. And 
I had this problem last time I'm getting my picture on, but okay. there we are. Hold on. Ben? Oh, there we go. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Adam Wickstein here on behalf of the applicant, the Maranek Beach and Yacht Club and Spa. Um, here seeking the special permit at our last meeting at April 7th, we were asked for certain additional information and we gave that to you in the form of an affidavit and a chart. The affidavit was from Mr. Rancati as president of the club. He outlined the dates of each of the events at the club in 2019, 2020, and 2021, and whether they were member or non-member events. And again, he swore to that list in total over the three years, just as an example, we're talking about 29 non-member events. Right. Um, well below the percentages, the 20% allowed each year. And that, that is the basic precept of why we're here. Um, I will say that last time around, there were three events that the public identified as disturbing them. Two of those were member events. The one that has been identified in the most recent batch of emails that we did see yesterday, uh, thanks to Brittany, uh, excuse me, Wadrina, um, was also a member event. And Conrad can speak to all of that if the board has questions or if you'd like him to go into it. The, the other thing we did is we were asked about the filing of the 990 forms and the 990T and what we confirmed. And I am not a tax lawyer. I wouldn't purport to be. But looking at the guidance, it's pretty clear that the 990T is applicable when a not-for-profit such as this has more than $1,000 a year of gross income from an unrelated entity, which is not the case with the club as stated in Conrad's affidavit. Um, I have nothing you, else. You don't, you don't have to do a 900, you're saying? We have to do a 990, but and not a 990T. The way the code is written and the way the resolution is written. It says we have to file the 990 and the 990T. Uh, frankly, that should be corrected in the resolution because we can't even fill out a 990T. Okay. Now, what is it about you that makes it so that the one is inapplicable versus applicable? Is it because of your structure or what is it? It's, it's because of the amount of income derived from sources other than the club. It only applies if the entity gets more than $1,000 a year of, in a year of business, of gross income from an unrelated entity. That would mean an entity other than the club. And Mr. Ancati has said in his affidavit that that's not the case. So they get less than a thousand or more? I'm sorry, could you? Less, that? less. Less. So this whole, this, the applicant receives less than a thousand dollars from the club a year? No, from unrelated entities. The applicant is the club. Okay. Right, now I noticed on the list that you do, on the list that were provided here, um, they provide absolutely no information in terms of the types of events. So, I mean, you could have the, the bulk of these could be 10 people or they could be a thousand people. I, I don't know what the volume is, but is there a way? And they could be weddings or they could be a conference of 10 people having a meeting. Correct. <clears throat> I'd like to see if we can get some implication because that would have a that would go a long way towards understanding the use as opposed to a non-specific enumerated list. I really think that's not relevant to your determination as to whether there should be non-member events. There's nothing in the code relating to that. There's nothing in any of the comments that you've gotten that relates to that. Obviously, the number of people that can attend is limited by the capacity of the venue uh, of the building. Well, I, I would have to say I differ with you on that, I think, um, and obviously I'll consider it, but it does seem to me that some of the people who wrote were concerned about uh, noise and uh, 
activity. And if these events, if the bulk of these were all large events, that would be one thing. If the bulk was small, that would be something else. So, but if you don't want to address that, that my friend is up to you. Conrad, can you give the chairman a general overview of what's typical, particularly the non-member events? Because that's really what we're talking about. Well, there's a, a Conrad Roncati, uh, president of the club. Uh, we have a non-member event uh, this evening, for example, which is Holy Child School Prom, which is historically and annually been held at the club. Um, I think that there are 150 people, um, you know, kids, high school seniors. Okay, so it's uh, a prom event. Parents have dropped them off. Yeah. Okay. I mean, but are most of these weddings or uh, uh, christenings, bar mitzvahs? Uh, party sizes can party. range, Mr. Chair. They could range from uh, 25 people to, to 150 people or more. What's the more? What's the max? Uh, we have a maximum occupancy in our main room, I believe, 225 people, if that's, I recall. That's inclusive of staff or not? That would be the occupancy of the hall, including staff, yes. Okay, now, you said the main hall is 225. Do you have other halls that you would use contemporaneously with that? No. Okay. Well, actually, I, I want to know the other side of that as well, whether it's a member or a non-member event, based on your categories of events, do you have a minimum number of people that would constitute an event? Uh, if, if somebody books an event, we don't look at anything under 25 people categorizing as an event. You know, if somebody has 10 friends over, uh, to join them for dinner or lunch, we don't characterize that as an event. So somebody actually has to book a room or the hall. Well, the the there's a we have an events director that handles all of the member events. So if somebody's having a birthday party, a, a, a retirement party, a, you know, an anniversary party, a wedding, they would go through our events manager. Yes. Okay. They're always pre-arranged. I have a question for you on um, members, for membership events. That means they have to be a member, correct? Correct. All right, now you have different types of membership, correct? Yes, we have um, single memberships, couple memberships, family memberships, and then you could belong to uh, the entire club. You could just belong to the yacht club, for example. So if you have a boat. club or the yacht club? Yeah, so if you belong to the entire club, you could enjoy the tennis, the food, the pool, the beach. Uh, we have some members that are just yacht club members. They have boats um, and they use the food and they use the boats, but uh, the marina rather, but they're not allowed to uh, uh, use the pool, the beach, or the tennis. They're strictly yacht members, marina memberships. In addition to those two, do you also have a dining membership? No. Oh, there's no such thing? No. And what about tennis? Is there just a tennis membership? Yes. Um, just How does that work? Just to follow on Mr. Gladstein, how does that work? I'm sorry, Rob. We have just tennis members. And they can do what? Tennis and food. Tennis and food, okay. So when you refer to members events, they would be comprised of people who were the entire club, the yacht club, or tennis membership. David? Any, mem any members of the club. Right. I'm David, sorry, remember, to remember that a member, well, a non-member event as defined in our code is not is something not hosted or financially guaranteed by a member. It doesn't mean only members attend. So if I'm a club member and I have a wedding for my daughter there, that's a member event, even if no one else who comes is a member. That's a non-member, that's a member event. Just right. remember that's the way our code defines it. Right. So a non-member event is only something that's totally extraneous like a school. 
Right. I understand. I was Terrific. just trying to understand the different memberships. So that those memberships would, I was under the impression, I thought I got it from the website, but that there was a dining membership. But you're correcting me and saying that that's erroneous, correct? Yes. So those are the only three types of memberships you have, entire, the yacht club, and tennis, right? And then we have varying levels of family, um, couple, or single membership. Well, that would apply to any one of these, correct? Yeah, so in, you know, we, we, we have uh, multiple levels of membership. And then within those levels of membership, there are different levels of participation. So it wouldn't be fair to charge a single person uh, a club membership the same rate as a family of six. So we, we have different levels to accommodate different people, different family sizes, and different intensities. Okay. Can you explain the difference between a member event and a non-member event in terms of uh, music uh, or or restrictions uh, or non or member events, uh, you hold them outside with amplification. Uh, I know non-member events are subject to the special permit, but what do you typically do for member events? We don't differentiate. Um, we have not had a outdoor amplified events in three years. Well, now- Most, most events are, are indoors. Okay, well, I think uh, one of the things that we're gonna be asking you, if you wanna address it now, that's fine. Sure. On April 16th, the club held an event, which uh, was heard almost a mile away. Uh, it was incredibly loud. Uh, we heard from members of the public. People were sending us videos. People were sending us audios. Um, I, for one, was in the area. I thought that Harbor Island was having an uh, outdoor concert, uh, and it turned out to be an event uh, at your place. The amplification. The event, the event was a wedding. It was okay. a member of the club. It was also a resident of Shore Acres. So it was one of your neighbors had a wedding. He's a member of the club. He lives in Shore Acres. Uh, he's part of Sapoa uh, by extension. It was an Indian wedding. They're traditional. Uh, weddings begin with a procession. And they started at the uh, front of the driveway to the club and they walked to the club. And the, the, the groom was uh, part of that procession. So that was something that was uh, uh, atypical. It was uh, a member event, a Shore Acre resident. It was a traditional uh, Indian procession to a wedding. Um, we weren't aware that there was gonna be a procession, but they all congregated at the front and then walked up to the clubhouse um, and went inside. I was not there at the time. Have you seen the uh, emails that we received? I've seen some emails, yes, sir. Okay, they were all- and There might be new ones that I'm not aware of. They were posted, I think, last week. Yeah. And we did see them. Okay. So what you're saying is, is that the party was held indoors and that the uh, music during the party was also indoors. Yes, the, the only thing that was outdoors was the procession to the club. It was in the afternoon, I believe it was one or two o'clock in the afternoon. It wasn't in the evening. Um, there was a procession to the club. The entirety of the wedding started with a cocktail party and proceeded to dinner. It was all indoors, yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone else have any questions or should we take someone from the public? Does the applicant have any further? Just, just a question for counsel on the board. My understanding, because you started the meeting with the legal statement, is you're correct. We would need three votes to get an approval. Right. But unlike an appeal for the, from the 
building inspectors determination on a variance or interpretation. If we don't get the three votes, it's not a denial. It's not a default denial. Just making sure that's- I'm sorry, if you don't that, get the three votes? On a variance, if you, let's say, have a two to two vote, it's considered a denial on a special right. permit. It, that's not the case. Special permit is the same, I believe. No, it's only on an appeal from the building inspector, I believe. I will take that up. That question has never come up before to my knowledge, but my understanding uh, is I'm sorry, I my understanding that the way the code is, the way the village law is written is that it has any decision of the board, but you know, I don't know, I'll defer counsel. Charlie, do you understand the question? I do, and I, um, I have the answer to that. I'm just searching my emails for some prior research. Um, oh, okay, that. great. I don't think it'll matter this evening because a resolution hasn't been prepared. Yeah, there's no resolution tonight anyway, right? Delivered. Okay. I'm, so, I'm sorry then for bringing it up. I apologize to the board. Yeah, you don't have to apologize. But... It's one of those questions that I have to look up the answer every time it's asked. Okay, well, this time we're going to make you memorize it, Charles. Yeah, I probably will. <laughs> okay. All right, do we have someone else then who wants to ask to speak? Do any members of the public? I believe there was someone earlier who said they wanted to. I believe it was Beverly Sherrod, my memory serves me. Yes, am I? You are. Oh, by the way, to the applicant, are you aware there was also a petition that we received? Yes, that was addressed at the last meeting. That was oh, I just, March. Just, okay. No, that was the... May, that petition was in May. Then we did not see it. May of 2020? 2021. Oh, 21. Excuse me, excuse me. You're right. 21. 21. You're right, you're right. Yeah, we, we had testified. Yeah, I, I know, okay. It was a, the, there was a, an event May 20th, 2021. Uh, interestingly, it's the same event we're hosting tonight, the Holy Child School Prom. There was a retirement party on June 12th, 2021, and then a bat mitzvah, October 23rd, 2021, that we did respond to during the last hearing and post. Um, and we testified, I did, that uh, in those events, doors were left open um, to the, the main, to the club building due to COVID. We were asked by parents to leave the doors open. This was still, 2021, the height of COVID. Okay. And yes, there was amplified music indoors that was escaping to the exterior. We, we submit to that, that special petition, circumstance. That petition was refiled with seven new signatures on it with a note that if you oppose the 2022 renewal of the Marinette Beach and Yacht Club special permit and support the restriction of amplified music after 7 p.m. or 9 p.m., please sign below. And it looks like one, two, three, four, six, seven people signed below on that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. You okay. Yes. Yes. For Wexing's uh, question, you're right. So this is a special use permit application. So if a majority of the board does not deny or approve, it's a non-action. Thank you. Okay. So a majority, so it takes to have the action, it's a majority, correct? Correct. Okay. Fair enough. All right, we have a member of the public here, I believe, Ms. Sheridan? Yes. Thank Good you. evening. Thank you. Good evening. Um, may I ask a question? I have a few things I wanted to say, but may I ask one question that I thought of? Um, when you were talking, Mr. Rancati, when you were talking excuse about- me, Excuse me, Ms. Sheridan, excuse me. What we do is, I, I did, I neglected to point this out, I apologize, but the we don't, the uh, public doesn't ask questions of the applicant. You can pose what yes, questions you, you think should be, but you're speaking to the board, okay? That's, okay. What we, we don't allow that. Does the board, but, does the board but, know? Is that my question? Does the board well, know? no, you can say, I would suggest the board ascertain such and such if you want to. You okay. okay. I, I suggest the board ascertain whether the um, current management of the club is using the same, um, has a membership category that was used by the prior owners of offering weekend short-term staycation memberships? Um, that's a question. Okay, that's a very good question. I thought we, okay, fine. Okay, go ahead. We, we, we'll, we'll, okay. 
Do you have anything else? Or oh, yes, I do. I do. That wasn't what I came okay. to say at all. all right. <laughs> okay, my name is Beverly Sherrod, and I am the president of the Shore Acres Property Owners Association. Um, I'm not going to summarize all the documents that were filed because I can read as well as I can. Uh, I did want um, to make a few comments to clarify where SEPOA, what SEPOA is thinking about and trying to accomplish. Um, I don't know whether the members of this um, board are aware or recall that in 2019, SEPOA signed a memorandum of understanding with the new owners of the club in which essentially the club was, all they had to do was agree to a comply with federal, state and local laws. Um, these would be laws that were governing private nonprofit membership clubs. Many of them relate to the quality of life in the community, or a lot of them relate to environmental matters, which I realize are not your concern. And the village, as was expected to enforce its regulations and keep records, and SEPOA, in exchange for this, would not object to legitimate club activities. And this continues to be our position. Um, we have had, however, over the last three years, numerous complaints from residents, some of which you've seen, um, and they fall under the aegis of various village entities, including the zoning board. I think some of them would easily be remedied, such as complaints about noise, which would be yours. And some of these complaints may be unwarranted. Um, you know, it may be that large busload, events with busloads of people were member events, but we have no way of verifying that. And we've had no access to reliable documentation and that's why we've been concerned over this time. I remember that Mr. Shallow said that he was drawn to the Beach and Yacht Club because of its great natural beauty. And I wanna say that that's why we live here in Shore Acres too, it's the same reason. People in Shore Acres understand about the importance of recovering one's investment and earning an income, we have to do the same things. Shore Acres residents are governed by state, federal, and local laws. From time to time, we need to prove that we're in compliance with them. And we think the same should be true of the Marinette Beach and Yacht Club. And we understand about private property in Shore Acres. It's my right to use my property, but I can't let it diminish, for example, on the value of the Beach and Yacht Club. And the same thing is true for the Beach and Yacht Club. We're neighbors. We don't have to like each other. We don't have to invite each other for dinner every Saturday night, but we do have to respect our mutual rights to quiet enjoyment of our homes and our neighborhoods. And we all have to comply with the laws. And that is what SEPOA is asking for tonight. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the public who has any comments they would like to make? I'm sorry, I was on mute. Yes, we have some more raised hands. I'm going to please, promote them to please, panelists. Please, thank you. And when this person is finished, you can promote the next person. Mr. Golub, is that you? See your name there? Okay. Um, the panelists should be able to unmute themselves now and speak. Good evening, Mr. Golub. So um, I'm here speaking as a neighbor of the club. I've lived as a neighbor of the club for over 30 years. And during that period of time, there's been at least three different administrations of the club. I worked as an ally of SEPOA for many, many years, uh, fighting with the prior owners of the club because they were intent upon not having a club but wanted to have a condominium development. And for reasons of impact on the neighborhood, as well as for reasons of maintaining the Marinix coastal zone uh, framework, 
there was objections to the prior owner trying to turn the club into a condominium development. And that was a long, hard fight. And it was successful in stopping those condominiums from being put, put in place. And there was a tremendous amount of conviction that the zoning should be upheld and that the uh, usage of the club's land should be restricted for what it was zoned for, which was to be uh, a marine use with access to uh, the, the, the public. One of the things that I've observed now with the new owners is that they actually want to run a club. Undoubtedly, if you could somehow maneuver to turn it into a real estate development, it would be much more profitable but they have exhibited through their words and their action that they want to run a club. And as the next door neighbor to them, my concern is that if we are going to put onerous restrictions on the club, then you drive someone to be into the real estate business because the club is not viable. And my fear is that the pro property can become derelict and that's not good for the aesthetics of the area. It's not good for the safety of the area. It's not good for the peace of mind that we hope to have living in a community like Mamaronek. Uh, I have heard things over many, many years in terms of from the club. Uh, the acoustics of the water are unusual. There are some days, depending upon the way the wind blows, you can hear you can hear music. A lot of times you cannot hear music. I will tell you that I heard the Indian procession. I happened to have been in my yard and looked over and observed the procession. Uh, I'll also confess that rather than being upset by it, I felt a little excited because I had actually been in India and seen a, a procession and seeing it, the same thing happening almost in my backyard was was really exciting. It was loud, no question. Yeah, that, that's what made me look over the fence to see it. But it was, a, in, a, in my memory, that was probably the only time that my particular property was affected by the sound in an adverse way. And I say that not questioning other people who in different locations, they may have had different experience. I can also tell you that in terms of being a good neighbor, the, the, the club has been very friendly in terms of accommodating. In fact, I had a wedding on my property and my concern was that I was going to be disturbing the club because of the music from the party. The club was actually very accommodative and even let us use some of the overflow parking. Okay. So in short, um, Sapoa and myself fought very hard to, to make sure that the club property was used as a club. Uh, we were fortunate to find the legitimate operator who wants to operate the club. I see with my own eyes the work that they've done to restore the property uh, and to make it safe and make it not be derelict and reinvest in the assets required to run the club. So I believe what they're saying to be, is to be credible. And I just would w warn the community that what we risk by making the, the, the club uneconomic may lead us into a situation that we don't want to be in. Okay. So again, thank you for your- Thank concern. you, Mr. Gold. And I just would lastly, for the record, say I have no financial interests whatsoever in the club. I am not an investor in the club. Uh, my daughter once stored a sailboat over the winter there. Um, I'm simply speaking as, as a neighbor and someone in the community who respects all the things that people said about why we live here and the, the peace and quiet what we, that we want to have. But I know when I bought the, my property 30 some odd years ago, I knew it was next door to a club. And I knew that when it was next door to the club, clubs are different than a residential area. So it isn't as if suddenly we had a condominium development that got converted into a club. Every, I would imagine almost anyone who's living in the community knew they were buying something next to a club and that has some positives and negatives. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Mr. Zothnis, did you want to speak? I see you're up. Yes, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, first, Mr. Chair, and to the board, thank you for taking the time uh, to hear me and others uh, speaking on behalf of this issue. Uh, my wife and I both grew up in Mamaroneck, so I know Mamaroneck, Larchmont, and Rhineck very well. Uh, my family uh, joined Mamaroneck Beach and Yacht Club uh, in its first year that, that it reopened. Um, when I first got there just to see the grounds, uh, I was just blown away uh, at what that club had turned into from being vacant for so long. Uh, what I witnessed uh, over the next few years was nothing short of remarkable. Um, I had a chance to get to know Mr. Roncati, Mr. Shallow, uh, my wife and my, my three daughters got a chance to uh, see with their own eyes the time, energy and efforts that went into restoring that club. Uh, I can tell you that uh, their time and their energy uh, is truly being put toward, uh, from, from my perspective, uh, a truly enhanced experience for families uh, who are joining. Uh, they have turned that club into an oasis. Um, and I am, I'm not biased. I do understand that if there are issues of sound uh, that are disturbances, in this case, it sounds culturally related. Uh, which I think has to be taken into consideration. Uh, but I, I also have witnessed them running this club responsibly, uh, taking care of members, taking care of the club, and with good intention. Uh, so I just wanted to let you know that um, I think that uh, within the guidelines uh, of restrictions and regulations, what I've witnessed are responsible club owners. And uh, I just wanted to show my support and uh, as a member of five years, uh, let you know that this has been consistently well run. So I appreciate your time and Good. thank you very much. Thank you very much. Is my there pleasure. someone else, uh, Vivian uh, Gotchen, you've been raised, is that correct? Okay, is there anyone else who wishes to speak from the public? No, I'm sorry, I'm here, can you hear me? I can now, yes, correct. Okay. You are Vivian. I can. Yeah, Vivian Joaquin, yes. Joaquin, good evening. That's good evening. Okay. Um, and thank you. Yes, I'm, um, I just wanted to say that I'm a, a neighbor. I live around the corner for the, from uh, Mamaroneck Beach and Yacht Club. We've lived in the neighborhood for 23 years and um, <laughs> you know, we're always tennis players and members. And when uh, the previous owners, uh, left and, and the, the property started to get run down. It was really of great concern to us the way that it started to bring down that area. And we were hopeful that someone would take it up and do a good job with making it a good club again. Um, and, you know, one of the previous gentlemen, or actually both of them, have said everything that I need to say in terms of the yacht, uh, the yacht club and how it's been turned around how they've put so much into the grounds and their tennis program, you know, just redoing a brand new pool and making it into a proper yacht club, which, you know, um, we do want to make. Um, hopefully they'll have an opportunity to make, a, you know, a, what am I trying to say? To make a go of it. And um, as a club, as opposed to having other businesses come in or having it treated as a piece of real estate. Um, and, you know, when we moved into the neighborhood, we knew that there was a yacht club around the corner and a, a club around the corner that could possibly have noise. We knew that moving in. And we think that if anything, it enhances the neighborhood to have that, you know, being taken care of and maintained so well. I want to just say that uh, I also have no vested interest and just wanted to say that on behalf of uh, our experience with the club. Thank you very much for your comments. Thank you. Does anyone else here? Okay, if not, I have, we'll go back to one question um, for the, I guess, the president of the club, and that is, yes, sir. Are there short-term memberships or all these? How long are the memberships? If somebody's coming in for an event, can they say, okay, I want to be a non-member event, or I want to become a member, so it's not a non-member event? Uh, and, the, all of the memberships are seasonal. We don't have any weekend, short-term, weekend pass. Um, had no idea that might have been done under prior ownership, but we don't we don't offer that. 
Of course, somebody could join in July for a half season membership. You know, we, we normally prorate the fee, but uh, all memberships are annual memberships. And people join like in the, is it annual by calendar year? They join whenever we have people joining now. Um, our pool well, just got is, completed. Is it a calendar year? Is it the season, the calendar year? In other words, is it January 1 or is it? It's the calendar year. Yes. Right. So, so 2022, 2021, 2020. Right. So somebody could come by in November and they would pay two months of that year, correct? We, they would probably at that point join for the next year's season. Okay. Thank you. We're, we're closed in the winter. I have a question. Do you have, as I recall, and I'm, I'm, I can't remember which, which um, the club had sent us the, um, in the past this question, but do you have um, rules and regulations for events? Uh, in other words, is there any rules? So if I'm running an event, whether it's a member or non-member, just out of curiosity, um, are there any rules? Are there any limits? Like, can I do whatever I want? Uh, no, we have a, whenever there's an event, there's uh, a contract and you have an event or there are um, in that agreement to have the event, we state what we're going to do and what we expect of our, our uh, the person having the party. So we'd have rules like you must be out of here by 2 a.m. or 4 a.m. or midnight or whatever it is. I don't know that we have. Okay. I don't recall there being specific rules about when you must leave the property. It's more uh, general in nature. You must be respectful, uh, you know, com you know, carry yourself in a respectable manner, your party, follow the rules of staff, etc. Well, because there are, there is at least some hourly requirements. For, yes. In the, in the code. So I was wondering if people Our staff, who are having parties know that for example no event may continue after 12 midnight sunday through thursday yes Just, we okay. we adhere to every single rule and regulation yeah i understand that that but that's not my question i'm not saying yeah. you don't i'm asking there was, if i'm giving the party whether the I'm party a has a time limit in the agreement it okay, says your party will run from 1 p.m to 3 p.m on saturday or it. it'll run to midnight on a Thursday because it's a weekday and we have that deadline. That would be in the agreement. Yes, ma'am. Okay, that was, that was my question. Yes. Just for the record, I mean, you have received a lot of correspondence and none of them suggest that we've ever, certainly over the last three years, exceeded the time limits that are in the code or in our special permit. I wasn't suggesting you do. No, I no, I know. I know. How you, how you, did, yes, how you maintain that. Yes. Any other board member have any questions? Okay. And everyone who's spoken from the public who wants to, I believe. Is there Claire Zelenka? I see the name. Has that person been elevated because they want to speak? Yes. Oh, good evening. Hello. Hi. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead, please. Okay. Um, I have a question about the special permit the noise restrictions on the special permit? Does it have noise restrictions and what are they? And I'm sorry I got on late. If you covered that earlier, I apologize. But what are the noise restrictions? They, do, they have to do with the uh, outdoor amplification of music for the most part. There are okay. no specific noise, no. Re noise restrictions in the code. That's what you're sure. asking. Except the noise ordinance, but there are no restrict specific the yeah. code does not have any specific noise restrictions okay well not talking about the code um uh a woman who had been involved in my building i'm one of the residents at 490 bleaker had got it obtained a copy of the special permit and that seemed to allow for music till 1 or 2 a.m on the weekends and 11 on the weekdays, do you have um, any of those times there? Yes. Um, no outdoor music or outdoor application can be used after midnight at any non-member events on Saturday or Sunday or after 10.45 p.m. Monday through Friday. Okay. You're, so you're I, I had um, 
there was an event there a couple of days ago and I, it was an opportunity for me to record the event from my apartment window. Um, I sent it into the building department. I'm not sure. I hope somebody got it. If you didn't get it, if you could provide me with an email, I'll make sure that you get it. But you can clearly hear everything from across the water. It's very, very loud. And that's why we are urging you to consider putting some sort of restrictions on the noise. Um, 12 a.m. is just too late in a suburban area. It's just too late. This is not Manhattan, this is Mamaroneck. And you can clearly hear everything that's going on. Um, thankfully, that was a, an event that was on a weeknight. And so it did end around 8.30 or 9.00 but I sent in that recording just so you could, you could see, you can hear everything very clearly. There are people out on the terrace and things are amplified. Okay, these, this is the outdoor, you're hearing this from the outside. Correct? Oh yeah, it, and the, um, from the tape that I made, you can see people out on the terrace. Okay, well, we will look at that tape, we have that. What you, was you, the game? Do you have it? I thought I saw it, yes, I believe it's, okay. it's, it's accessible. I saw a reference to it. I did not actually, I was not able to open it because of where okay. I was. What was the date of that event? Um, hold on. Let me look at my records. If you'll bear with me for a second. I believe it was Thursday night, whatever, um, not Thursday night, Tuesday night after Memorial Day, whatever day that was. That's the 31st. I believe that was the day. Mr. Roncotti, did you have an, an event that day? There was an event last week. There was no amplified outdoor music. It was a member bat mitzvah party, bar mitzvah party. This didn't sound like a bar mitzvah it sounded more like um they were honoring people from various classes from 2021 2022 and before that and prior to thinking to record this there was music playing amplified music that was very easy to hear from across the water um i unfortunately didn't think to start recording until i heard everybody talking but you could clearly hear, it sounded more like an adult thing. I don't think it was a bar mitzvah. There was a bar mitzvah last week. It might've been Thursday. I'm uh, texting my uh, banquet director right now. To see what was on 31st. Okay, let me see what my, um, oh, but again, I, have, I have May 26th. I have May 26th. It ended around 9 p.m. on May 26th. Um, I also have uh, club noise recorded on May 7th and um, May 14th. So, um, but that particular, I'm sorry? I, we have no amplified outdoor music. We okay, if you listen with outdoor amplified music the, this year. Okay, well, whatever you want to call it, you guys have a great system and you it's very loud and you can hear it um, loud and clear across the water. So if it's not amplified that, you know, that's great. Good for you. You've got an awesome, awesome sound system, which is very, very loud. And I think all we're asking is that if you could reduce the the decibel level does it have to be that loud right so we we are uh under the 70 decibel um sound um which is in your sound ordinance we are well aware of the sound ordinance uh, noise ordinance in the village and we do comply with that also we're we're you know we are working very hard and have been working very hard uh, since we took over this property to make it more beautiful, make it functional, fix what was not repaired, improve the grounds, the service and the quality uh, uh, of everything at the club. We're attuned to every 
um, comment that's made. We listen, we're responsive, and we know the ordinances. And we do not violate any of those. We work very hard to stay within the parameters of the rules um, and support our membership and the property. We've invested millions of dollars in the property. It's functioning, it's operating. People are very happy. We're part of what we do is host events. And uh, we do respect the fact that there are people across the water, that there are people in adjacent neighborhoods, and there are people even on boats. But you know, we can hear people speaking on boats as they go by uh, in the harbor. We can hear uh, the harbor police speaking to uh, people uh, on boats as they go by. Um, you know, there's sound travels, and we understand that. We're respectful of it. We're doing our best to keep a limit on it. We monitor the sound. We look at the sound levels, and we're at always below the 70 decibel level. Do you have records? Do you have written minute, records? Excuse me. Excuse me. Mr. Lenker? Yes. Um, if you would please make your comment. Do not ask questions. Make your comments oh. to the board if you have any others. Okay. Um, does the board, has the board ever had any evidence submitted of the decibel level of compliance with the decibel levels? I don't know. Has any evidence been submitted? It. Okay. I don't believe so. No. There's never but been a will, but excuse me, sir, just yes. a second. Okay. We've got a lot to do tonight. We, we, I don't want to, I mean, obviously you can have all the opportunity, but not, not to go over the same things. I think that we will listen to those um, videos that you did send in. Or one of them, I did see reference to that. Um, and I think um, your basic concern is that the noise, it's the, uh, you would like them to consider somehow lowering the volume. Not, it's not even, and the hours you mentioned as well, but I think the times you mentioned were earlier. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. I appreciate them. I think we all do. All right. Um, does anyone else have any comments? Do we have any else from the public here? And there are no other hands raised. Okay, thank you. I would love to have if the chairman and the board would let me a couple minutes to respond. Two minutes, two minutes. Go ahead. Two minutes. Yeah. I mean, it's 826. We've got an agenda so. here. I don't want to be unfair right. to others. Number one, we understand the board has to do its fact finding. It's conscientious. But this really is a narrow issue. We've been in compliance with the code for the last three years. We're here for a renewal. And and it, it should happen. There's no evidence here to prevent that. Number two, there have been statements saying we have to show that we're in compliance with every code, rule, regulation. It's, it's an impossibility. It has nothing to do with the special permit. Number three, people's sensitivity to noise. And of course, there's noise at a club. It's an enforcement issue. There's a noise code in your town on the event everyone was complaining about a, a few weeks ago, the police came out, they find no violation and they left. That's the body that deals with that. Um, number four, you look at this club, members can do many things outside. It carries noise. It's allowed without a special permit. It's a club, there's tennis, there are kids yelling and playing at swimming pools, there are motorboats, turning on and off and going past here that I guarantee you are at louder decibel levels. We're not talking about a single family home. The folks who are complaining moved into an area with a club that was here for decades that is in compliance with the code. And finally, I would say that in order to deny a special permit, and here we're just talking about a renewal, it must be shown, the board must make a finding that the impacts of the use for which a special permit has been granted have greater impacts than you, the uses which are permitted as a right in the zone. And, yeah, I don't think and any, that can't be and that can't be shown here. It can't be because the membership I don't I understand you. All so right. I appreciate uh, thank you very much. I have a question now for the board members. Do you want to hold this open until you hit the video or do you want to close it? I'm I'm happy to close it. Okay, Brian. I'm happy to close it. Uh, is there a motion? I'll move to close. Second, Brian. I'll second. I'll second okay. It. Robin? Yes. Brian? Yes. I'll vote yes. Okay. Thank you very much. This hearing is closed. Thank you for your courtesy. We appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Next matter, please, is the application 09 eight, uh, Area Variance 22 on 830 Orienda Avenue. I believe the lawyer is Mr. Spatz on that. 
And if you can also take Mr. Mercati out, because I don't think he's speaking on this. Charles, you just changed location on the screen. Good evening, Mr. Spatz. How are you? Good evening, Chair. We're, we're fighting a time schedule here, and there's a lot to do, so we're going to try to move you along quickly. This is I'll keep my introduction time. less than 20 minutes, I promise. No, I'm kidding. Could we just promote the cooks, my clients? Uh, that's Certainly, Jenny. Jenny and Daniel Cook. Please, and also Jacob, Jacob Goldberg, Chair, uh, is Jacob the architect. Cook is the architect. If, if the um, attendees who were to be promoted, if you could raise your hands, that would be helpful. Thank you. This is the case, Mr. Spatz, am I right, where they're relocating an existing garage yes, and you're, yes, dropping, yes. you're dropping your combined sign yard, correct? By about yes, seven sir. feet, am I right about that? Uh, the variance is 7.1 feet. Mr. Spatz, uh, Andrew, I have a question for you. Having, just so that when you're at, when the architect speaks, we can get these, uh, this answered. Um, as I look at the table, the chart, and you may not have the answer, but that's fine. I just want to raise it now so they can answer it. As I look at it, it looks like you're all for me to waive a, a variance for the single side yard for the southeast side yard, which is going from, which is going to be. It's at 34.6. 22. I don't know that that's true, but if not, that's an inconsistency. And the same thing with lot area, it says the required is 15,000 square feet and you have 12,000 square feet. That's an existing non-conformance. So I'm just not sure what is existing non-conformances, what is the fact, what you need. Um, so if someone could really please, if the architect is really what I'm looking for, could please make sure that you right. explain what variances are actually needed and what- Mr. thank you. We, we will Definitely, definitely. That's why. Right, so go ahead. Here. Yeah, so, I, I, I had the same question that, you know, right. it must require a single side yard uh, setback right. as well. So I'm right. glad Robin brought it up because Thank we, you, really, was, yeah. we cannot go forward unless we know what variances are necessary. Right. And, and we have Mr. Goldberg readily available. If I could just give a little bit of a narrative of what we're going to be doing. And that would be ideal. Again, and for the record, Andrew Spatz, 650 Halsted Avenue, Suite 105, here in the village of Amerinick, <clears throat> on behalf of 830 Orient Avenue, the Cooks, Daniel and Jenny Cook. Um, they are actually former neighbors of mine, lovely, lovely family at 830 Orient Avenue. They've owned the home since August 8, 2000, um, 2013. They reside there still. Again, it's our application this evening for one variance, uh, as we pointed out on the southeast side, uh, southeast side yard, as the property is required to have a combined side yard of 35 feet. The property currently has 12.9 feet on the northwest side and 34.6 feet on the southeast side. The proposed addition for the relocation of the existing garage would provide for a setback of 15 feet on the southeast side, thereby from our calculations would require a variance of 7.1 feet. The addition to the side of the house for the relocation of the garage would result in an increase of 474 square feet, which remains well below the max, max gross floor area and the building coverage. Moreover, and I think that this is a really important point to raise given the gravity of what's happened over recent months and years, is that we actually have a reduction of yeah, total yeah. law coverage of impervious surface. That's something that's obviously very important here in the village. That's the 307 feet, correct? Yes, yeah. thank you, Chair. Okay. Um, there's also proposed stormwater management that will be incorporated, which would include uh, additional drainage and storm wells. Um, the house would absolutely remain in character with the other homes on the neighborhood. And I'm sure many of you know this, um, on Orienta Avenue in this particular area, you have Orienta and then you have the bridal path their home is on the other side of the bridal path. Uh, so it's set back off of the main drag of Orienta. Um, we're not seeking to increase the height of the existing house. In fact, the new addition would be lower um, than the current site line of the existing structure. The obviously the proposed addition is modest in nature. It would enhance the property for the applicant and the neighbors alike, especially as, that, as it re relates to the reduction of impervious surfaces and the current placement 
again, if you're at the property, you would see that on the southeast side, there's tremendous amount of natural screening and landscaping. Um, the benefit obviously sought by the applicant could not be achieved by another method other than seeking this area of variance as the location of the addition is actually practical with existing structure. And it actually assures the ability for us to do what we would like without increasing impervious surface. The request of the area variance is very much in character and harmony with the neighborhood and community. It's not substantial. The application would have absolutely no negative impact on neighboring properties. In fact, it would improve um, the situation at this particular property, especially in light of the water that they um, encounter uh, near the garage area where it currently stands. Equally as important, the proposed variance will not have an adverse impact on the physical environment or where the property is located. So rather than me speaking, I'm gonna throw it over to the Go uh, Mr. Goldberg who can address any have, questions you had. One quick question. How yes. many, maybe you know, maybe you don't, I don't know if it's time. How many feet do you have to give notice for, for somebody? Well, in terms of our predicate notice? Uh, yeah. Direct notice as opposed to the sign. Charlie, uh, I could tell you that we- I'm only posing it because I don't know how many feet I am from the property. Uh, uh, Chair, that's a good question. We, the list that we got was derived and generated, I believe, from the planning department. Uh, so it's, it's through the mechanism that we utilize. So whatever it spits out, um, and we did actually file that with the building department. I'm sorry, with the planning department, excuse me. Okay. I'm not located on Oriana, but the next block, um, <clears throat> yes, East, is um, Bleaker. You have Claflin behind it, and then you would have- Well, um, you have Bleaker if you go for, but it's, it's gonna be three houses away and then two houses down. Right. Yeah, because I'm on Grecian Point, okay. Fair enough. No, I didn't get a notice and I, I have no problem with this. I mean, in terms of the location of me. Okay. So, Chair, you, you're very right, Let's put, the, put your architect on, sure. Sure. Uh, Jacob, go ahead, buddy. Okay, so the question was uh, what we need a variance for. Do you want me to share my screen and, and call up a site plan, or should I just describe it? That, that would be good if you could share your screen. Sure. It's more if you could uh, authorize him to do that, that'd be great. I believe the notice requirement is 200 feet. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Charlie. Okay, can you see the screen? Yeah. Okay, so this is the proposed site plan on the upper right-hand side. Um, the left side of the house is an existing nonconformity. I don't know if you can see my hand here. Yes. yes. But that's the existing nonconformity. What this is, is the, the nonconformity? What is the side yard on the nonconforming side? Twelve point nine. Okay. So can you uh, can you answer the question that I posed? Don't you need a variance for the single side yard? Yes, we need a single side yard and a combined side yard. Okay. Um, because yeah. the application only says combined. Right. Jacob, that was the uh, application that you filed. The burning, excuse me, the building permits. You filed with um, the village of America, correct? Well, uh, we didn't specify a variance. We just gave them the chart. Right, and, 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 and the plan. They, they generate right, the, the letter denial. The, the right. chart only shows, it's not clear. Um, no, the chart shows both. Yeah, it shows, that's how I knew. <laughs> right. Yeah, the, chart, the chart's very honest. You're saying, Robin, is that the the actual substance of the application doesn't refer. What I'm to saying is the building inspector in his um, whatever right. that document is that he issues and from which says only the combined side yard. It does not right. say single side right. yard. But um, I think under seven seven twelve, uh, Charlie, we have the right to do what should have been correct, right? Correct. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Thank and you, and that's why I just want to make sure that. Yeah. No. No. That's a good. No. It's a very good point, Robin. Thank you. Okay. So. Go ahead. So the, your twelve nine was the existing one. You're not you're not changing that one at all, correct? Right. Right. So that's untouched. The other one now is is how much now? The right on the right side where the requirement is twenty two point one feet, and we're asking to go to fifteen feet, which is the minimum um, in an ideal world for the side yard in that zone. 
That gives rise to the seven hundred one foot now, now I am confused. So we we so in other words, currently we, it says twelve point nine on the northwest side, right? And it says thirty four point six. That's what's existing, side. David. Oh, I see, so, and then two lines down for right. a back of set fifteen feet. Okay. So what we did was we did twelve point nine plus fifteen right. that arrived at twenty seven point nine feet. Right. 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 Okay. Now, right now, with your 12.9, okay, so you're, you're above it now. Okay, I see. All right. So that's your that's your only change there. That's the 7.1 on that side. Yes. Right. For, the width, for the width of the, uh, or the length of where you're relocating the garage, correct? Correct. Okay. I have a, another que a question again. It says that the lot area, the required lot area is 15,000 and that you have a 12,000 square foot lot. Now, does that mean you have an existing nonconformity in lot size? Yes, the lot complies, as far as I understand it, with the required width and the required depth, but it's still undersized for the zone. So then it should, I guess, so the application should have said existing nonconformity, which it doesn't. Okay. And you're short. So that's why I was double checking. Got it. Okay. I mean, it's not a problem, it is what it is, but you wanna make sure we understand what's going on. Okay. Okay. All right. I had a question about, it says that you're going to be regrading the driveway. Could you explain that to us? Yes. Um, so right now, if you can see the hand on the left side, the existing site plan, the driveway sort of sinks down, it slopes down. And then you enter the garage, which is on grade level. This is a front to back split, so it's under the bedroom level. And um, in big storm events, this floods. So what we're hoping to do is, is when we locate the garage here, we want to raise the grade a couple of feet so that there's a very, very slight pitch to a drain right before the, the property line. Um, and I can show you, can I, I don't want to disorient anyone. I'm just going to change the page. There we go. So this is the existing drop slope on the top. Mm -hmm. And then on the bottom, we're proposing that the driveway actually just has a very, very gradual lift. It's about, we're changing grade about 18 inches here. The wall is about 24 inch high, but the grade is only being raised about 18 inches. I see. Okay. Okay, and then that's going to be uh, going towards. Uh, I think you said there's a uh, a stormwater management uh, apparatus on the end of the driveway. Yes, yes Mr. Godson. Yeah, so we'll have a, a long linear trench drain between the the driveway and the street. But you're not changing the grade in the back of the house. Correct. And there's expect? a reduction. There's a reduction of uh, pervious. I'm sorry, impervious surface, Mr. Gladstein, right. by uh, 300 and 307 square feet. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what you're expecting is that instead of having water pooling there, it's going to be absorbed there. Yes. We, well, there is a drain. Um, should we go back to the site plan. I, I saw the drain on okay. the top A1. of the southeast corner of the yep. property. Yep. Yeah. Right. That stays in place. Okay. But hopefully that would. Since the, the ground will be absorbing water directly, that would only be for a, a very large event. Does the water ever go towards the neighbor's property? Um, no, I think we'll have less standing water now because we have more, more pervious surface. Okay. Um, I have a question about the, so you're, you're turning what was the garage into a mudroom and office, correct? Yes. Okay. Does that change anything with respect to the calculations of floor area? This is obviously at above grade, so it's floor area, but I know there's some exemptions for garages up to a certain point or for, so. Our numbers include the garages in, in both before and after, so that's already included. So the numbers reflect the fact that you're adding the garage as well as changing the use of these portions of the existing yes. building. Yes, yeah. I believe that was 474 square feet, which remains so well below the max gross FAR uh, and covered. Yeah, that, that wasn't a question. I just want to understand what's happening, making sure that it was done. So, that, so how large is the garage? Is, um, 
dimensionalize the lot. Um, no dimension. So the proposed garage right. or the old garage? Proposed garage. The proposed garage is well. The width the width varies between thirteen and a half and fifteen feet wide. It's basically just a large one car garage. Right. The depth is 23 feet deep and it's about 325 square feet. Okay, so the other 474, so 150 is what you're repurposing in the existing house. Well, yeah, but I actually, just for simplicity's sake, I included the garages in my FAR numbers. Okay. So it's all, it's all in there. Any board members have any further questions of this applicant? Um, I have a question. Um, I went and looked at the house and you've got a fence and then there's a playground. That's your property, correct? Right. Let, I'm going to turn that to Jenny and Dan. Yes, yes, that's correct. Okay. I, th that's what I thought yeah. based on the survey, but then I was perplexed by the fence. So. Yeah, that just, just uh, fence for the kids and the dogs. Yep. Okay. Um, Okay. Ms. Kramer, you got to check that out on a Friday. All the kids in the uh, Orient <laughs> come on over. You got, we got we got to keep them in somehow. Exactly. Is there anybody here from the public that has any comments or questions? Okay. No, there's no hands raised. Okay. Thank you. Any I have a question. Did you okay. ask your neighbor? Did you speak to your neighbors? We did. Um, yes. They're no. They have no issue. We have spoken to um, both of our next door neighbors and both of our adjacent rear neighbors. And nobody has expressed any concern, no. Okay. okay. I have no more questions. Ever? Ryan, anybody want to close the hearing? I motion to close. A second, Robin? Yep, second. Okay. Robin? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Yes, okay, the hearing is closed. Thank you very much. We will. Thank you. Just so you're clear Thank on this, you. we're closing the hearing, but this won't be dealt with tonight. Thank you. Okay. No, I'll explain Thank what you. that means to my clients. Thank you. Okay. Thanks but, so much. Chair, my, only exception, Thank you. my only exception is Mr. Gladstein has uh, his bike in the background. I'm sitting here with a box of cookies and you've got uh, your bike in the background. I'm, I'm getting a complex here, but other than that. It's, it's my wife's. <laughs> <Take> <laughs> have a good night, everybody. Thank you. Have a good night. Well, good job, okay. everyone. Thank you. Okay. Next matter is um, special permit 10, special permit 22. It's the application of Dukes Ramon 1 LLC. Is the applicant here? The applicant here. Okay. Cool. That's for the fish sale and on-site sale. Gene Lum, are you, are you with the app? Are you the applicant? Yes. Hi. Good evening. How are you? Hi. Good evening. This is a. Uh, you have an application here for a special permit, as I understand it, to operate a retail fish market. Uh, no. So we, um, in the former Harbor Fish Market, takeout restaurant at 154 Memorial Avenue. Okay, I'm reading from your. Okay, and on-site prepared food. So this is a restaurant as well? Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. You're planning on eating inside? Right. So the space is um, kind of small, so it will be limited to counter service. We'll have 10 seats at the counter. Oh, this is the one? Yeah, okay, I understand. Right. Are you related to the Dukes that's on Boston Post Road? Um, it's sorry. all one, so you're going to be operated by the restaurant on Boston Post Road. Right, so we have Baby Duke's Seafood and Steaks, and this will be Duke's Ramen. Are you operating together, or is, I mean, is this a separate operation? It's a separate operation. Okay. So is this the? This used to be the. Uh, what do they call that? It was the diet. The. It was harbor. a fish place. It was a fish place. Harbor Fish, right? Harbor Maybe fish. To do um, up the street by the Sonoka Station. Okay. Wait, they moved. Did you say they moved? They did, yes. To where? Um, the former Italian restaurant. Um, Piccolo Il Casa. Il Castello. On the main drag of Mamaroneck Avenue or up or closer to the? If you're leaving the village and you pass the, you go underneath the train tracks um, after oh. the snow left. Okay, all right. 
Sorry, I'm just curious. I wondered whether they closed or what happened to them. Oh yeah, no, no, they, they're moving to a larger space. Um, fair enough. Okay, so are you going to have? Is there a counter service you're going to have here? Right. So we intend to build a counter about a 25 foot counter that can see approximately 10 guests at the counter. Um, there won't how be any. Could, could this? You're coming in and out. Can you say how many people it will seat? Uh, 10. So we won't have any tables inside because the space is, like I said, kind of um, small. Are you going to be looking to have tables outside during the summer? Uh, we do plan to um, apply for the uh, outdoor seating permit. The previous tenant had, I, I believe, 10 seats outside. Okay. What percentage of your, you're selling fish as well, correct? You'll be selling... No, no, no. We will be selling Japanese ramen noodle soup. Oh, okay. Why am I missing them? So you're not selling retail fish? No, no. That that was the former occupant. I'm looking at an application. Maybe I got the wrong one. It says. Oh, I see. That was the prior one. Right. I'm sorry. I keep on, I had circled that when I first read that the other day. I, okay. All right, I'm glad I'm the only one that had that issue. I apologize, oh, here we go. Okay, I had just, when I had circled that, okay. So you got your hours of operation. I'm trying to see where does anyone can someone point me to where on the application it deals with what they want. The special permit it says on. Yeah. Uh, on page, what's numbered page seven out of twenty two? It says special permit. Right. And then on page eight is where the I see where your problem is. It says, oh no, that's the prior. Um, so it's page seven. And then a special permit. So the page seven is where it says it's a special permit. Right. No. And then you go to page 12. And then um, on page 12, it's got all of the specifications. But where? I, I hear what you're saying. It says the hours of operation. Right. Okay. You, you know what I'm saying, Robin? It says yeah, be... what, you, what, you, what, you, what bothers you, what, what you're missing. Where it says it will be a fast food restaurant or a takeout or whatever. Right. Where is that? It I'm does. Gonna... Oh, that doesn't actually say because there's no place. It's a terrible form. Remember, we tried to fix this a few years ago. The, more than uh, once. The, the applicant submitted a cover letter where that is stated. Right. It's a lousy form, David. We need to go someday. We need yeah, to go back and that's fix true. the form again. And your free time. Oh, we accept that for a fast, casual Ramon noodle restaurant. Offering carry out and delivery service and additional we'll have 10 seats. Oh, it is in the cover letter. All right, so we'll deem that cover letter to be a part of the application, Charles. Is that all right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, what I'm saying, Robin, you understand me. I would just usually yeah. you, you read that where it'll say uh, somewhere, but the operations will be yeah, okay. Yeah, oh. it's 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 the form is ridiculous. There. The form's ridiculous. Sure. Yeah, I'm with you. That's so cool. stipulated, yes. Yeah, that's why I went to the other one and I just click, click. Okay. All right. So this is going to be, all right. That's why I asked about retail. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, they also, I don't know if they had to uh, actually fill out the SEAF, but in there, they have the brief description of the proposed action in the SEAF saying to open a fast casual restaurant serving ramen noodles, et cetera. So they, they did put that in the environmental assessment form. Okay. Good. Although I don't know that they needed to do. It, it, yeah, I don't think they need to do that, but yeah. They, they have to do the environmental part assessment. Part of the form, Brian, and therefore everyone fills it out. The determination of whether it's a type one, type, type two, two or unlisted, is it made at the time they submit the application? Okay. So they submit the EAF 
in connection with the application. Do we have diagrams of the seating arrangements on the site? Well, the, only, the only seating is supposed to be, uh, they're gonna build a counter, counter, correct? I understand, but we have no diagrams and we have no site of that, right? But usually we get. Yeah, I think under, the, under our um, code, we're supposed to see the seating, the interior. Um, give me a second. I did drop off a, um, a rendering by our uh, designer that shows the counter and the seats. You did? That yes. would be helpful. Hi, yeah, Chair, there, there was a submission. Um, there was a submission of, uh, I think, seven or eight copies of the uh, layout, uh, which was counter service, all one side. Uh, and I believe it was facing right when you would walk in the door. So um, oh, we didn't see that. We didn't I'm just looking online to see if it's by any chance on there. Um, Dukes, let's see. I've got a determination letter, COs, CCs, photos, sort, survey application. No, we don't, no, we don't have a there. link. No. Have we no. seen it? I've not seen it. No. When did you drop this off, sir? Um, so I think that was one or two days after I dropped off the application packet. Well, I think Brittany has been uh, on vacation, so I don't know whether or not it made it into uh, the AKRF or, or you know, our online, what we have access to. Do you have a copy available now? Um, I think I do. If I could actually just, I'm, I'm doing the Zoom on my phone. If I could just put my phone down and I'll, I'll grab a copy. Yeah, it would be helpful. Yeah. Hey, one minute, please. I'm getting vertigo. <laughs> you should walk around immediately. Yeah, no, so we don't we don't have it on AKRF either. No, I'm looking at it. it but I, you know, I don't fault the applicant if he actually no, I, he's, I'm sure he yeah. Yeah, we have to get plans, not just the rendering. Two yeah, we need. Things. It's in, it's the, in the rendering code, right? doesn't give you dimensions. It doesn't give anything. So um, I think we're going to need the. I think have, you're right, David. I think we're going to need the applicant to submit a plan. Yeah, yeah. Special permit. In their cover letter, they do say it's approximately 25 foot non-structural counter. Yeah, but it's. I know. I. I don't disagree with you. I'm just yeah. saying what they plan to do. Yeah, no, I, I we all understand that. I, I think, yeah, I, I think it's more that we. Okay, I, I apologize. This copy I have is my last copy and it's marked up, but um, let me try to. Uh, application, ratification. Are you able to see that? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think what we're going to, and I apologize because we don't have it and it wasn't available to us, but I'm, I'm just, Charlie, do you know the section? My recollection is there's a section dealing with restaurants and what the plans have to be submitted with this. Uh, let me pull it up. Ah, restaurant. Oh, da, 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 da. No, sorry. I don't recall any specific submission. I just remember the seating arrangements. And we've seating always done it. Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure because that's I remember that as a special permit restaurant. Well, that's yeah, that's, because uh, they're going to have to. The code requires that for carryout restaurants, it has to comply with the area requirements of the fire, New York State Fire Code and the Building Code. Um, and there's no way to make that determination without a copy of that. And obviously, we don't make that determination, but uh, yeah. the building inspector is going to have to. And um, 
you know, we need to see it. Well, that's yeah. that that's another question uh, based on the code. You know, what are we going to categorize this as? I that's that's what out. I was. Hmm? I think it meets the carryout. Yeah, I think it does. Yeah. Oh, so by the Board of Appeals, I would have phase in this part. I can't find it. I just remember. Three forty three is the definition. Yeah, I think I think he's going to have to come in with plans on this and then maybe. Dennis, are you there? Dennis, are you babysitting? <laughs> what district is this? Uh, who the C2 district. Okay, I couldn't remember, okay. And um, since they are are they within 200 feet of a another uh, fast food carryout or deli right, on the that side was... of the avenue? If so, remember that our special permit has to include that they need a variance of that provision. We grant them all the time, but we need something with respect to that provision. Okay. Well, I think we can we can probably do that under the. Was a, Charlie, when we when we're reviewing it, we can give what should have been done, even if it wasn't done, even if it wasn't a setback at the beginning. Yeah, so I, I think you know, the this is, should yeah. look at yeah. different, as we've done several times in the past, the different yeah. uh, definitions of restaurant yeah. uh, and carry out restaurant. I think that's step one is to classify the proposed use. Right, so that's what I was saying. Yeah. And then after that's classified, then Robin, you're correct. If it's a carry out restaurant, um, then it has that 200 foot limitation of being next to another carry out restaurant on the Marinette Avenue, unless the prior business, which sounds like it was a fish market was a carry out restaurant, then um, as long as it's Yeah, the prior restaurant, the prior um, occupant was primarily a fish store. Okay. So, you know, the definition of restaurant and the definition of carry out restaurant um, would be the board's first step in trying to determine right. what what use this is. Right. So I'm, I'm just saying that assuming we call it a carry out, we then have to make that second determination. It's not an issue. Um, we just need to have the yep. um, the standards. Um, all the, so that's all. Well, then, you know, Robin, then I think what our purpose yeah. should be uh, tonight is um, to ask questions uh, along the lines of those definitions. So to the applicant, I ask, um, are you going to be selling any grocery items? No grocery items, but I, I will say that the uh, prior occupant, Harbor Fish, um, they, I think they did half market and half carry out because they had, they had a full 10-foot uh, hood with cooking equipment. So they would do um, take and delivery as well. Okay. So you're going to be, and it's going to be just 10 people will be eating in the premises and the rest will be takeout, correct? Uh, yeah, takeout for pickup or... Um, you know what percentage you're going to be, people will eat there as opposed to taking out? What's your plan? Um, I would estimate that it'd be 30, 30 to 40% dine-in because it is limited with the 10 seats. Another relevant question as the board has done in the past is whether or not 
and I think the term is for a carryout restaurant, uh, including incidental sale of ready to consume food and beverage from a counter type installation. But that doesn't mean they have to have that. It could yeah, have. it's just one of the. Yeah, and he yeah. said they're not going to. I think he answered Brian's question. Right. That they're not going to have okay. All right. can I, can, it seems to me that where we need to go from here is we need to get a, from the applicant, we need to get a copy of the plans that a plan of the restaurant as you're going to have it in the future, the counter, the dimensions of the counter, the, the, diff, the distance, you know, an actual plan that shows a, what, what you're putting in, what you're building, and, we'll, and the board members will have to make a determination about what it is and what you need. Mm-hmm. All right. I think what he should do is he's going to have to meet and get the maybe meet with the you know, Dennis or Frank and then get the papers and file those and put them on for the next meeting. That's my yeah, sense. So, so do we keep this open? I think you have to for that. Yeah. In other words, we're missing some paperwork. You've got to you got to categorize this as a type of restaurant that is. I don't think that'll be too hard to do. You need the variance in, if you're located within a certain number of feet from another restaurant or a similar type. And you'll need plans for the inside so you can show us. And I understand that you said earlier you had uh, submitted the plans, but we don't have them and they're not online. I can't find them. Well, no, no. He, 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 he submitted a rendering. rendering. Or rendering. Okay. We, we would need proposed plans. Right. So I think what you can do is maybe uh, put you on for the next meeting and you'll have to just, we'll keep this open so you can come back in without having to start over again and get, get, get those for us as soon as you can. Okay. And um, I know Dennis is, is showing he's here, but he's, I can't reach him. Dennis, are you there? Ah. Uh, all right. Um, no, I'm, I'm here. I'm here. Oh, you are. Dennis. Okay. Yeah, not, yeah. okay. Welcome. How are you? All right. Listen, we, the gentleman before us is with um, the application for Duke's uh, is the, to open a small counter restaurant for eating at the counter and also some takeout. And uh, if there aren't any plans, he, he had given a rendering, but I think he's going to need plans for this something to show us the interior and the seating for the restaurant. Is this something that you can meet with them on to give them some guidance on or? Yeah, and also he'll need, he may need a so, variance. He may need a variance depending on what else is close by. So, um, you know, as the way the restaurant is currently built and the, the conformity that was there prior to them taking the place, there's no change of the counter space. They're changing detail and so forth and some mechanical devices, but the counter space remains the same. They're just adding 10 seats in front of it. So what the board is asking for is you want a rendering drawing from a design professional showing distances and clearances mm. throughout the entire business. So wait, uh, let me understand this. So they're taking the existing counter over which they sold, right? They'd stand behind the counter with a fish and they would sell the fish over the counter. And they are changing that to a, over the counter will then be used for serving of food, but they're not reconstructing the counter. The, the counter is, there is some reconstruction of the counter, um, but it's not fully, it's in the same position that it was in before. Um, it's, the mechanical devices will change because now you're gonna have people working on the opposite side of the counter. Um, that's it. But the, the counter is in the same exact location without being changed from the last uh, ownership. Just well, wait details. A minute. They, the yeah. old, the prior, the current, I don't know if they, no, I think they closed and I've passed it recently. The prior <laughs> had most had a fish store and also sold some prepared food, for, right? And um, not prepared, you know, right? They made food to order, to go, take out to go, right? Fried whatever and the you didn't sit at a counter so the counter served a different purpose the counter was primarily the place behind which the fish was Co correct correct but so it they, did have a counter top to serve food on 
it did. As I recall. Yeah. It, it did, it did. Okay. It wasn't fully, uh, there wasn't a full uh, service throughout the whole, uh, there was mechanical devices, there was a fish, there was a fish icing machine, which later was see, uh, sealed off and covered, um, you know, to be more presentable so you didn't have to look at all the fish staring at you, you know, it gets uncomfortable after a while. And, you know, it, it really worked out for the last owner. So, you know, counters in the same position. Now that counter will be a service counter to a degree with a place to sit and eat. But, you know, I think, I mean, for how I look at the rendering, um, if you, you know, we just looked at it, there's probably 12 to maybe 16 inches of a counter space that uh, plating and drinks will happen on. But behind that, there will be the reality of a salad station, which is the same thing as food preparation of what the, the past business had there. So a salad station, a prep, a, you know, a place to put cheese on a burger, no, not doing that, but you know, just per se of food preparation. So the counter is remaining the same. The hood location um, is, is, is routinely staying the same. There's a small extension that's on it from the prior business, um, but the business will be almost identical to what was there originally. Now, just with the exception of the chairs. Hey, my, my, my concern is not that I don't want to put this applicant through a lot of expense and everything, but at the same time, you're having an, an operation special permit. You, you have to have some kind of an interior layout. And well, the that is, it sounds like they submitted it to you. Is that correct? We just don't have yeah. it. Yeah, so yeah, no, it, it, it actually it, it actually came into my hand. I had it physically in my hand. That's I, you know, I'm pulling fine. my hair it's out. It's not out. We've looked online. I can't find so it. So then the applicant doesn't need to do anything. If Dennis, if Dennis already has it, then Dennis just needs to make what's been submitted available to the right, CBA. Right, right. So I yeah, said we'll yeah. put it over for one way or another, but we just gotta act on it soon. So I mean, I don't see how we, I mean, Rob, you said I don't think we can close this now. No, yeah, but so, be, we should be able to close it next. I mean, we're clearly. Oh, yeah, no, no. We should be able to close it next time as soon as we so, can. So what I have is the the same exact image that, that you saw, um, you know, 10 minutes ago that he was holding up. That's what I have uh, several or eight, eight copies of uh, that, that came into the building department. I, I don't know where they're located. I know I have one on my desk that I that I kept for myself. So um, I can make copies of that and, and pass it over to the planning board, or sorry, not the planning board, to the planning department, and they can get it out to you. Um, I'm searching my and email I, right and have now. It put, and have it put online too. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So I'm I'm searching my email for it currently, and I I don't see it. All right. Uh, but, but it did but, it did but, come to me in a digital digital rend, uh, rendering. I do have it as a text message, but that doesn't count for. So anything. Robin, what we what we really need them to do is to determine whether or not there's right. any variances required for the space yeah. inside. Right. It's not like we're just going to look at it and make that determination. Right. So what we're asking of Dennis is for you to look at the dimensions and to see whether or not a variance is required for, uh, the, you know, the the setup of the establishment. So I I don't feel that a variance is necessary. Um, I I I don't have my note in front of me, but I think it was uh, three forty six. 34. I don't remember the, the what I was looking at for, you know, outside service. Um, you know, if there's a patio in the rear, then they that, would need that, a variance. That um, wasn't the issue, Dennis. No, no, but it, no, no, no. It's the it's where it's where there's another restaurant. Yeah. A, so so anyway, at, at the end of the, at the end of the day, I mean, for a business that was pre-existing in that location, and there's cosmetic changes and and fixtures that are being moved. For me, that's more of a building department thing. And if the board wants a rendering, then we will ask the applicant to have that expenditure of creating a, a rendering of, you know, where he's putting his items. I mean, so for us as a building department, then, you know, Ms. Pally want 36 inches clearance so people can walk into the back. You know, if he's only gonna have 10 seats inside, you know, I, I don't see if that being a problem. If he's doing over-the-counter service and deliveries like every other business, I, I don't see how that would doesn't. Oh, but that, the question is, how many how many establishments is there a restriction on on how many can be near each other? Yeah, 
The question, Dennis, yeah, is well, two feet. questions. First of all, we're not looking for a rendering. We're actually looking for the plans, which they would presumably have had to submit to you. And I think you said you received. So I re so I received a rendering, not a plan, not a okay. stamped plan by an architect. OK, well, I'll, I'll get to. So, so leave that aside for the moment. With respect to the other question, to the extent that we deter that this is a carry out restaurant, which is what it sounds like. Um, or a fast food restaurant, which it doesn't sound like, but to the extent it's either of those, then it can't be within 200 feet of another carry out or fast food restaurant or deli without a special permit. So we need you to determine, I'm sorry, without a variance and you know, we give them, we give them, but we need you to determine whether or not this new proposed um, restaurant carry out restaurant or what, what is within 200 feet of another one on that side of Mamaroneck Avenue. So that so, we need um, you to determine. Robin, so does I, it have to be I on can that make side? That, yeah, it says so. Okay. So I can make that determination now, right? Let, let We can go over it together. We have a diner that's two doors away, right? That's general sit down, not carry out. Um, and then we have two other restaurants, which everyone knows, Don Hito and Piccolo Molino. Um, I think Pelico Molino is within the 200 feet, but that's a complete sit down restaurant. And as for across the street, there's that no, one. No, across the street doesn't matter. So we're, we're good. I don't, I don't see anything within 200 feet um, that's going to be an issue. There, Wait a minute, no... isn't this going where Harbor Fish was? Harbor Fish was next to, was not next to the luncheonette, the diner. Well, I and mean, people call it a luncheonette. People call it a diner. No, 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 no. It's, no, it's also food. next to the French bakery. Right. Yeah. And which yeah. is a sit down place. Uh, I mean, if somebody's taking a cup of coffee and they're walking out the door. It's not it's, the, 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 for the French you know. bakery is not a sit down place. The French bakery may not be a fast food restaurant. I don't think the fast French bakery is a fast no. food restaurant. I think it's a store of some kind, whatever. But um but that's what it's next to. It's not next to Don Hito and it's the other end of Mamaroneck Avenue, isn't it? No, no. So it, it is. So it's, it's if you're on, um, it's right, but let's say it's diagonally from the regatta. Right. Correct. Okay. okay. So further Mount, down, it's on right. the corner of yeah. Mount Pleasant right. and Mamaroneck Avenue. So oh, sorry, just keeping sorry. in that conformity, it goes luncheonette, uh, I think a, a nail salon or some kind of beauty, beauty place. It would be uh, Duke's Robman, if I'm not mistaken. Then uh, the French, uh, the French coffee shop, uh, and then after that's a parking lot. And the next restaurants over are Piccolo Molino, okay, so followed right. by Rock Island Sound, I believe, and then Don Hito. And then okay, so you know, Don across Hito. the street doesn't matter. So within 200 feet, they're good. There's there's nobody okay. within 200 feet. Okay. Good. What is so? What is that? What is the bakery? categorized as it's not categorized as a carryout it's probably not a restaurant it's probably a bakery a bakery is not a restaurant well i understand that but it says a business enterprise primarily engaged in the retail sale of food or beverages which may include grocery items well but bakeries I, I, always I, I, that. I they never that. categorize uh, bakeries as a restaurant it's a separate but use just because it can be within something else doesn't make it within something else um, there are, I can't remember, unfortunately, I don't remember. Um, yeah, I, I also believe, sorry to interrupt, Robin, but I also believe that the bakery um, is under the um, Department of Agriculture, not the Department of Public Health. So that would define it more as a bakery. Um, I'm pretty sure that the, the Westchester County Health Department does not inspect that facility. I believe it's the Department of Agriculture. Um, and you know how I know it is that they're baking goods and selling baked goods. Uh, they, do they do have, have a clock they have machine. a special permit, Dennis. I, I don't I don't know. I don't what believe they I don't permit. believe they do have a special permit. Bakeries don't need special permits. No, but okay. Yeah, no, I'm I'm looking to see. I I, I don't see anything. I don't think that. bakeries it's, do. It's a bakery. You know, they got three confectionery ovens. I mean, they're spitting out bread and croissants. Right. And that's their that's their bulk business. Um, well, let me ask this question for both of you, or, or everyone here, is 
do we have enough to go through this with now or are we going to have them come back with some kind of a plan and, and give this some more thought for the next meeting up to you well um if i'm giving my two cents i would say just because it's not to some degree it's not changing it but we're giving a special permit i so on essentially an unknown that, that's my concern it's all of, like somebody one day says, well, who are you and what are you? Well, I don't know. The zoning board had nothing. That's my concern. It's more that we, you know, like. What, what, is, what is unknown? I mean, I do believe that this fits the, the definition of carry out. It doesn't seem to. That, that's not the issue, Brian. It's that we are giving, when we give special permits, we always say, you know, this is what we're giving a special permit for this. So now we're giving special permit for something that we're calling a carry out restaurant. So if tomorrow they wanted to come in and stick four tables and twice as many counter seats and put a much different counter and change the entire configuration of the place, they'd have a special permit. They could do what they wanted. We've never given special permits that kind of essentially said, here, take a special permit, do what you want with the space, we don't care, which is what we'd be doing here. Right, so are there any dimensions on the rendering or is it just a drawing? So, uh, chair, chair board, so let me uh, um, cap over it, everything. So that rendering that you saw has no dimensions on it because it was based off of the existing structure. Um, I, I see where the direction we're going in. So if you choose you know, to keep it open or close it, would you settle for a sketch with measurements hand drawn by the applicant? I can review with them or, or one of the building inspectors can review with them to make sure it's within keeping of the existing business or if they're making other, any other changes. Um, and take that instead of a stamp drawing to save the business owner the expenditure of what's going on. So if they say, you know, we're only having those 10 seats, that's it. There's no more room. I mean, there's really no room in that place for anything. Um, so, uh, you know, if they have if they have over 10 seats or I think it's 12 seats, then that would even change their dynamic for the health department and have to add a second bathroom as well. So I think it would be beneficial for them to leave those 10 seats and not go more than those because it would change the dynamic if they're selling any uh, beverages or whatnot in there. So would you be happy if they did a, a, a hand rendering, a hand drawing of the distances and clearances in there showing the, the front of the store and how much space there is and the lack of tables? I have a um, question for you. Um, don't, at some point, they're, they're making physical alterations to the space, correct? They may be they, minor, but they are doing something. They're not taking the space as is and just operating it. They're making correct. changes to it. Yeah, so they're changing appliances. So like a walk-in box is now being moved, which is an appliance. So the building department doesn't have any say in that or inspection on that. We would for the weight load on, you know, on that existing structure. So we're happy to see a walk-in box leave because that's a lot of weight. Um, if they were to make an alteration to the hood or to the exhaust system, that would be a permit for the hood and the Ansel system that's going through the roof. That would, the only thing that would be indicate on that building permit would be the hood and the exhaust and the appliances underneath it. That's the only change. Well, they um, did indicate that there's gonna be no alterations or additions to any kitchen duct work. Yeah, cor correct. So that, that's all staying the same. If they had to do anything, if there's a, a very slight probability they would have to make a slight change, they're aware that they need to file a building permit for it. I'm not, I don't have a problem, Dennis, with your, if, if you have, if they measure it out and you review it, because if it's a no change, I mean, they don't have to go through a, a signed and sealed plans if they sign it and you review it. I don't have a problem with that. Okay. I'm more okay. concerned with just having nothing. That's all. I, I, I concur with Robin's position on that, that, you know, I don't think there's a problem, but I also, the only problem is process wise approving something without these things okay so uh, uh, what do you think i mean but that's just me i don't know robin and brian that, that might be fine i'm just i'm just a little perplexed if they're doing some i guess that they're not that they, they don't have to get a building permit or anything from the village but i well, guess this way they may have to then don't when they... have to get a building permit from the village then um i'd probably be 
satisfied with a rendering that has dimension so we can have a floor essentially we're right. looking for a floor plan the what floor is plan. the physical no, setting of this right. new so we need that no matter what correct is that is that your feeling as well robin yes we need something okay. Right. It doesn't have to be signed and sealed plans. No, I I, we've that. said the same thing. We're right, all right. It, it, in order to do a resolution, you know, we we have to have that. Right. We have to have the details. Right. So, so that, why don't we do this then? Let's, that's let's, what we're approving. Okay, so let the applicant meet with Dennis and square everything away, get it to us, and come back for the next meeting. I think that's the only logical way to proceed. Brian, okay. you agree with that or? I, I'm just I'm thinking about uh, the the timing of things, and I'm and I'm wondering if there's anything else we need besides that dimensional. Uh, uh, that thing. Okay. And and the reason why I'm saying that is because, you know, if if they were able to get that, uh, you know, we could conditionally close the hearing based upon them getting that and we could even perhaps have a uh, you know a, a resolution um uh, drafted that way you know perhaps we could finish this within the next meeting if we have all of our requirements how about we do this let's have i i concur with you in the following how would it be we'll adjourn it we'll have council prepare a resolution and then we'll look at the resolution and we'll have the paperwork in front of us there's a problem, we'll just have to put the resolution aside. I have, I actually have a problem with that. I don't like the idea of not closing it and having a resolution. I, I would rather close it, except for the submittal of the applicant of the of the rendering. And then if we have questions on the rendering, we would reopen it. Yeah, that's that works for me as well. Uh, Again, I, I would hate to see them lose the entire summer uh, based upon something that Dennis has seen himself and uh, right. uh, that the- Charlie, is that okay with you? Does that uh, work? So the only thing is I would say uh, if you reopen it, that means you have to re-notice it and that's a whole dilemma. But I think we could do that. The board, if, as long as they submit it in sufficient time for the board members to say, so- uh, there's, we, there are four board members at the moment. We could each, we would each look at the rendering. If Greta or Brian or I or David have a question with it, we could say, wait a minute, we need to reopen and we could, as long as they gave it to us in time, we could either of any of us say, I need it reopened. And then they, we'd reopen it yeah, in but time. That, but, but Charlie's, what Charlie's saying is that the reopening is much more time consuming. Am I right, Charlie? Yeah, you would have to do another mailing and so yeah. forth. Or uh, if you just yeah, see, it. I think if you just adjourn it with the understanding, I mean, it's it's really up to us. The understanding is fine. Get us that. Get us it before. And the understanding is that, but for a surprise or something we're not expecting, we're going to act on it at the next meeting. That's I don't want to, David. I don't think we, we should ever. While I hope we can act on it at the next meeting, I don't think we can commit to saying we are going to act on no, it. No, we're not committing to anything. No, I, I understand. Even if we even if we say yes, we're closing it. We're not committing to anything. So well, we that, said, you just said, and we commit to voting it on the next. No, meeting. no, 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 no. I I understand what David is saying. He's saying, okay, we don't have a lot of pieces left on this. Let's get the let's just adjourn it. We'll get the pieces together. We'll have a resolution drafted based right. upon that information. And then at the next meeting, when we bring we it up, we can what? we can Absolutely. look at it, we can deliberate it, we can close it, and we can and we can vote on it. If right. we action it's, is it, other, right. It's possible to take action at the next meeting. Yeah. That's why I suggested the resolution because it's just there. It's not a guarantee or anything. You don't have to even do it. We could just, but I think yeah, it's like this way we have everything in line. And if there's something unforeseen or a problem, then then we'll deal with it. Yeah, I, I'm I'm fine with that because okay. that way we don't have to re-notice it, and okay. we still have the possibility of being able to just a possibility of being able to close this at the next meeting uh, if we get these details in place. And the I vote on it. And I would say if there's no surprises based upon this discussion tonight. We would just act on it then, right? Well, we have we have the ability to do that at any meeting. Right, exactly. All right. 
You want something drafted or not? I think I, something should be drafted. It sounds like that. this is a standard. Um, yeah, it's a standard uh, thing. It's not special permit. As long as we decide what it is, I think right. we decided it's, it's a. I think it is a, a carry out place. But you know, um, Rob and I agree with you. I looked at the other definitions, and uh, just because they don't. You know, it says may include grocery items, which means they don't have to have grocery. Right. They, there, there's no other definition which comes uh, close. Okay. All right. So we're going to adjourn this. Dennis, you're going to meet with the applicant and get us what we need before the next meeting as soon as you can. And we'll put it on for the next meeting. And if there's no surprises, then we can vote on it then. That would be great. All right. App, are you aware of what we're, are you following this i'm sorry <laughs> yeah no i'm uh, me i'm i'm here so yes, yes I, lum, right. uh, yeah. oh, i'm talking about mr lum that's it yes i understand thank you okay all right i think that we, we listen we're trying to expedite this because it's the summer months and you're going to get pushed back otherwise for the fall and this okay. way i think you'll do it and we'll we'll keep it open so you don't have to re-notice and just just get together with that soon if you could okay Understood. Much appreciated. Right. Thank you uh, so much. Okay, so Chair, we're adjourning this may, matter. Yeah. If I if I may, so just call the office tomorrow and, and make an appointment for Tuesday, okay. um, so then I can I can meet you down there and, and go over um, the Great. the whole place, you know, from ceiling to floor, front to back, and then um, the board the board will get what they need. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Thank you. thank you. Thank you very much, and thank you, Dennis. Um, no worries. All right, so the next matter now is one second. So number two is adjourned. Okay. Next is the application uh, 308 Mamaronic Avenue. It's 11 special permit 22. Um, let's see, the applicant is the Mukhit Arika for Barak Ali. Barak Allah. Barakila. I'm sure I butchered that. I'm sorry. Think of tequila. Tequila. Yeah, now we're talking. Okay. Brian. Tequila. There you go. Patron. Yes. Oh, whatever type you like. The applicant here on this? Okay, let's try one more. Is the applicant here on this? Okay, so someone named Mike is on the Zoom, but they're muted. Oh, he's got his hand up. Yeah, all right. So can somebody ask Mike to put his mic on? Can you guys hear me? Yeah, now we can. Oh, okay, great. How are you guys doing? All right. Um, this is an application for special permit to operate a new restaurant. Correct. No, it's an it's a it's a they have an existing special permit. It's an am, it's an amendment. So, I uh, I'm I'm the manager for Barkilla for the uh, premises for for uh, 308 Memorial Avenue. Um, yeah, I'm here today seeking to amend my original special permit use um, for the summer season. I would like to extend my hours of operation of the week i see okay yeah i apologize what happened again what happened the second time to this for some reason the way mine print out it's the, the notification where the permit is on top which is the earlier one okay no worries. yeah your may 12th letter covers this i understand yeah so you want to basically this is a change of hours correct change of hours yes uh so this is i was so i was seeking to change my hours especially for just the summer season uh for the the highest higher season um yeah so while while operating these hours i will be complying with all the requirement codes such as keeping the doors closed for any interruptions that would be caused and uh last time last time from the uh, last time i was at the board meeting i actually did get a uh, approved for an extended hours um which was uh fridays and saturdays 1 a.m so today I'm seeking to extend them to 2 a.m. Okay, I have a question for you because it's not what, what the application says is, and I think you made a mistake. It says 
I would like to extend my hours on Tuesday and Wednesday from 11 a.m. to 12 a.m. Do you mean from 11 p.m.? No, no. 11 a.m. Yep, I says it says 11 a.m. to 12 a.m. That's correct. Oh, so that's the 24. That's the 12. So that's it's 11 a.m. in the morning to midnight, essentially. Yes, yes. I, I, I was misreading it. I was thinking it was that was the change, but it's not. Is okay, there, I is there a copy of the existing special permit in here? It yeah. was in the application, yes. It is, yes, it's on the application. All right, hold on, yeah. Because I really, I just, I want to see what the differences are. Yeah, what is it? It's all, it, they're all one hour difference. No, okay. So, whoa, whoa, whoa. so Tuesday and Wednesday, you're asking. So, so you're currently at 11 p.m.? 11 p.m., yep. Okay. And on Thursday, you're currently at 12 p.m.? Correct. Okay. And uh, Friday, Saturday. Okay, what's, the date is, of, excuse me, what's the date of your special permit? I'm sorry to interrupt you. I didn't mean to, Brian. Is that November 5, 2020? Yes, that's the current one. Okay, so those hours say Monday through Thursday from 10:30 a.m. to 10 p.m. No, no, that's that was the original one, and then we and then I went through the, I went through another special, I went through another meeting. Okay. Oh, I see it here. You have a, a subsequent. Well, there was a so uh, now I so just so I just want to point out something real quick. So we did have an issue finding the special permit, the, the latest one that was updated. Uh, for some reason, we never received it uh, when Amber was part of the board, the, she was, when she was working at the, uh, that office. So yeah. when I was filing, when I, when I was, when I put the application in, we did have an issue of finding the, the updated one, but, but it's there, you know, it's, uh, we did get it approved, got a resolution for Weekdays, 11 p.m. and weekends was uh, 1 a.m. Yeah. Now, when when was it? That was just this past fall, correct? That was that's correct. Yeah, okay, because I, I remember that. Copy, I have a copy of the draft resolution that the board considered. Um, it is not the final. It was the draft that was was considered in November. 2021, which I think is the one you're operating under now. Correct. That's when I was last there. Okay. But I don't have the one I'm looking at has, um, and again, this is a draft resolution because I don't have the final one. I What's on the draft? That's what I was trying to uh, point out to that we did, for some reason, we never got the final one, updated yeah. one. There were a lot of problems with the, that kind of thing last year. Anyway, um, what it said was just so you can, ha I mean, I'm happy to share this draft with everyone. Um, doors and windows are to close by 10 p.m. Service shall cease Sunday through Thursday. What it said was doors and windows are to close by 10 p.m. Service shall cease at 10.30 p.m. And patrons must be out of the premises by 11 p.m. I can't tell you if we voted, what we voted on or anything. This is a draft resolution. Uh, and this was considered, this was dated November uh, 21st, November 4th, 2021. So the question that we might have to do is, uh, Charlie, I think you may have to go back. Somebody's gonna have to go back and listen and confirm that we actually voted on this. Yeah, yeah, I remember, I, I do remember, <clears throat> if, if I remember correctly, it was voted back on back in November and th there was a series of delay in processing that application because of some violations and there wasn't, they didn't know when the public hearing was. Uh, so I'll go back and track down the final resolution and get the hours of operation. Yeah. Oh, so, cause what I have here is, um, so we continuing to read this, the doors and windows are to close by 10, service ceases at 1030 and patrons must be out by 11. And then Friday and Saturday, Doors and windows are to close by 11, services to cease by 1230, and patrons must be out of the premises by 1 a.m. Um, I do want to say that um, just as a comment to, um, we have we the issue of restaurants on Mamaroneck Avenue and hours of restaurants on Mamaroneck Avenue has come up frequently because that's a noise issue. And as we 
allow restaurants to be open later and later, it becomes a question for noise on a street because there are residences above. So just keep that in mind as we're yeah. thinking about this. Yeah. So just want to quick, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt. So I just want to quickly just do a, a reminder. So there has been no actually, uh, last, last, from last meeting, there has been no uh, violations, thankfully, and or any noise complaints whatsoever um, that, I, that I am aware of, that I have double checked to before getting on the meeting. So, you no, know, we, we do, we are very cautious and very mindful about the residential area. So there is no residential upstairs. So there's only a few apartments across the street and we are very mindful again. And we do make sure that the doors, just there's just doors, there's no windows are shut by 10 p.m. And, um, and we maintain it. Right. What it about Thursdays? You need you want that extra hour Thursday as well? That's during the week. That's all. So Thursdays has been coming. Uh, like people been socializing more. It's been it's been coming becoming like a weekend for people right. out. So I will right, well, we'll have to get the other application, right, Robin? We're gonna need yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, because I say, have to have I only that. have a draft. I don't have the resolution. Yeah. All right. Um, so we need to make sure that it was in fact to. voted on because if it wasn't voted on, then we've got to consider the whole thing again. Yeah. All right. So we want to move this to the next meeting. But there's, uh, but uh, this is this is something that I'm I'm seeking to amend for the for the summer season though. If this if we if we I understand, but you don't have we don't have a special permit for you right now. That's with what these hours we do have. There's an existing special permit that hasn't expired from 2020, which has earlier hours. Then in 2021, he wanted to extend the hours. I understand. That's what we don't have a resolution of. Right. <clears throat> there will well, be no possible more... getting a vote or any. Well, listen, you know, a vote tonight without seeing that uh, current special permit uh, can't be done because. It, I do remember, and, and Robin's reading the draft correctly, that you know it wasn't just extending the uh, the hours per se. Uh, there were points in time where uh, food service had to stop, uh, where uh, you know then people had to exit by a certain time. So it affected not only you know how late you're open, but uh, the functioning of the restaurant uh, as well. Um, correct, Robin. It, it had uh, you know when food service stopped, and you know when. Yeah, when, I wish I could. How long people have been complying with there? that? I, Everybody doesn't see, that. but um, yeah, the problem is we just don't have that. What I guess we could do is then get it and just act on it at the next meeting. Well, I, the, yeah, so so really, the question here is, uh, do we have in order? You know, do we have any other questions of the applicant? Right. I think the applicant, uh, first of all, we're very familiar given the fact that this is like three times within a short time span that uh, <laughs> has come. Uh, okay. You know, if there's no current violations out there uh, and all he's asking for is an extension of hours, then, you know, I don't have any further questions. I will, I will note that, that on the short environmental assessment form, there's many errors. I don't know whether or not that needs to be corrected for the record. Um, I have a question. Is there a way to put something to, I mean, there's no chat feature as I can see um, on this, whatever, but I could post, Alicia, if there's no chat function here, I could post that requirement or somehow attach the draft, which again is just a, a draft, but if the board members want to see, but I don't, but there's no chat function that would allow yeah. me to do that. No. I don't think the chat function is available here, but I believe that you can share your screen if you have it up there. Oh, I could put it up here, sure. Um, uh, where is it? Were there other changes besides that? No. I mean, no, between the two. Yeah, yeah let me think. Let me go back and look at it, and then I could post yeah. it up here. Hold on. Um, yeah. if, if I could share screen, share. Okay. Is it sharing? You are sharing. Okay, so there's. There's the provision. I just highlighted it, sort of. And I'll go up the page before. Um, this was just, see, that's what I mean. I don't even have the final draft. I just have a draft because I had comments on it. 
but the main change is the hours of operation. I don't think there was anything else substantive. Right, but so, so you know, but what the applicant is asking for, if you could go back down, uh, Robin, to where it showed more detail. I mean, you know, you're saying that, you, you know, let's say on Saturday, Friday and Saturday, you want to stay open till 2 a.m. Uh, well, then, you know, does that move the time that the doors and the windows are closed? I don't think and, we should move the time that doors and windows are closed at no, all. No, I don't, I don't either. No, but, I, you know, I this is, but we I, have to ask the applicant what he's asking for. Right. Uh, and, and also, service ceases at what time? So I can uh, gladly answer that question. So I do have to close the doors regardless because of the to keep the, the area to keep the main, to maintain it cool inside. So I can't keep the doors open to in order to have my AC functioning properly. I need to close the doors regardless. Right. But if you're asking, so what is it you for, want to change? I'm just I just want to change uh, the closing time. OK, well, now, hold on. Think, yeah. You want to change the closing time till 2 a.m. Right. But. When does service cease if you're going to be 12 open? 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock food, 12 o'clock is food. It's regardless, the same thing, because my cook is my last service <laughs> ceases by 1230 AM. So food and service, food and service, 12, 12 AM. And then 130 is to get the patrons out and we close at two. Okay, so you're asking, so if I'm looking at Friday and Saturday, it would say you're doors right. and windows are to close by 11, service ceases by 12.30 a.m., and patrons must be out of the premises by 1.30 a.m., is that correct? correct? Correct. Okay, and then on the Sunday through Thursday, doors and windows are to close by 10, service ceases at 10.30, and patrons must be out of the premises by 11.30? Correct. Okay, so you're really just adding a half hour on that piece because we didn't tell you when, because the closing we didn't have a requirement of because you're going to clean up after patrons are out and, you know, it'll right, take right, as right. long as it takes That's you correct. to clean up. And we didn't care so much about that. That isn't going to be the noise or the um, anything that affects the neighbors as well as how we felt then. So just, you know, remind, you know, just agree with me. so it looks like the only change you're making is to when patrons have to be out of the premises. That is correct. Okay. And he's changing Thursday significantly because he's moving right. Thursday. He's changing Thursday to 1230. Yeah. I, 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 I'm not as comfortable with Thursday. I mean, if we get, if we can, if we can get a vote today, I, I, I can keep Thursday as. as You're not getting a vote today. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And if we're not going to get a vote today, then we're running late and we've got a lot to do. So I would say to be fair to him is, I don't see how we can vote if we don't know the status of what is. Charlie, am I wrong? I, on that? I, was, I was retained by Andrew Spetz. You know, there was a vote on. I'm, I'm you. I'm I'm operating my business. Okay. Under well, room. then you should have called up and I'm said to someone, "You don't have the permit." If you if you apply for a driver's license and it doesn't come, you got to deal with it. And I'm not blaming you. But I, I never received. I I, I know, I, but then you need to go and tell someone. I never I'm, received it. And just, just like if yeah, go ahead. This was brought to the and the the even though. Even the new new members at the office, they tried to even look for it. They 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 tried like for a week. They tried they couldn't okay. relocate it. All right. Well, what happened uh, is that's about uh, when Robin, Amber let's, left. Let's move, let's move this along because one way or another, are, are we gonna? Uh, and it was Robin. You can't vote on this tonight. Is that right? Is that well, your I mean, position? I don't know why we would vote on this now. We don't have a result. I mean, I just understand. I'm I'm just concerned. Why are we voting on this one when we have the one that was just here? That we also have. And I'm not arguing with you. I'm just, I'm, I'm just saying it. But you see, on the other hand, if we're not, then I don't see the point to really. We can ask for public, but, but we have a lot to going on. So if we're not going to vote on it, let's just move it forward. That's my sense. But Brian, unless you feel otherwise, then. No, I think that we got clarity now from the applicant. Uh, yes. You know, as opposed to these anomalous numbers, uh, as to when windows and doors will be closed. Right. Service will end and patrons will be put out. Uh, that's what we need because that's what we're that's what we're going to need to make a determination on. Uh, we also do need the current permit. Uh, and, um, you know, that is something that we can look back uh, because all of these meetings are, you know, recorded. 
uh, and somehow, some way, we can we can find the document, you know, and vote to amend it at the next meeting. Uh, I would keep this open, just like the last one, so we don't have to re-notice it. Should uh, uh, anything else come up? Um, but no, right now we don't. And if we don't, uh, Brian, if we don't find it, and it, and there's a mix-up on it, we can then act on it de novo. But at least we we'll know what we're doing. Yeah, correct. So one way or another, we'll deal with it. Right. One way or another, we'll deal with it and he'll have, uh, you know, if he hasn't had a permit before, God bless, he hasn't gotten a violation. Uh, uh, so no harm, no foul. And he'll get a new one with the new hours or whatever we decide is appropriate. Okay. Yeah, I'm looking at all of my emails on this, uh, from for this item, and I didn't actually see um, a, a, file, a, a final one. I'm not saying we didn't okay. do it. I just don't see it. I'll go back to the video in the meantime and check. Yeah, so you'll check on that. Yeah. And again, one way or another, this will be, uh, you know, this this will be now uh, put correctly going forward. Okay. All right. So we're going to put this off. This will be on the next meeting. And council, you're going to look for this and try to move it forward. Correct. Okay. I have a question, David. You raised this earlier. Um, and given that we've got a couple of applications that, you know, are restaurants and would really be great if they could, we could get their approval sooner rather than later. Yeah. Um, is there, can we move that July 28th date to something earlier in the month? Yes, I, I had wanted to do that. I, want to, I would love to move it for the first Thursday of July or the second Thursday. Yeah, I, I really, I do think that we uh, we should take that up after, uh, you know, okay. after the hearings, uh, because I do think it's important to. I concur. I, I, yeah, I raised it with Robin earlier. I think it's, yeah. um, I, I think it's, I, yeah, I don't know when that I would. I don't, I don't think we should wait till the end of July to deal with these issues. I As I say, it came up because of when the members could make it. I couldn't tell you exactly how or who or what it was, okay. so that's how it came up. So, then, and when the, so somebody's gonna have to, um, Alicia, can you check, and I don't know if you can, can you check when the, since we're gonna need to be in the courtroom on that day, can you check, or if not Dennis, can you check, or Frank, can somebody check when uh, the days in July that the courtroom is not already, you know, called for, signed for, approved for? So I, I can't do it live, um, but I can shoot you guys an email um, Monday morning regarding uh, when the courtroom is free. Um, so okay. if, if even if you go to the website, the village website, and shows the, the live active calendar, almost everyone is still remote um, currently. So we shouldn't have an issue with that. And I um, thought we have to be, Charlie, don't we have to be in person after today, after next week or something? Yeah, the, the Village Board of Trustees could do a series of steps and pass local laws um, to enable Zoom, but I don't believe the Board of Trustees has done that. Right. Um, so yes, it would be bad. But, but you'll encourage them? <laughs> I'm Zoom no matter what, so. I will try my best to encourage them. All right. Okay, so we're going to move this one over. This will be on for the next time. We will deal with a follow up for meeting and make a note. Anybody here have a problem with any days? So, Ryan, in, in, in July? July? Hold on. Yeah, I have a. Uh, uh... Well, why don't you just, if you want to email me dates in this way, as soon as I get them, I'll, I'll circulate it. Well, the, why listen. don't you why don't you circulate and then like and each of us can respond ASAP because Meg is also I mean sorry Greg is also going to have to respond. Gotcha. Okay. All because right. The available dates, right? Because maybe there's only five days that the courtroom's available. Okay. Uh, and so right, and one. they may not all be on Thursdays. So right. All right. Okay, so we're adjourning it. Thank you very much, Mike. Appreciate it, Thank and hopefully guys. we'll get you squared away here very quickly. Okay. Appreciate it. All right. All right, so we've got some resolutions now to deal with um, that have been out for a while. And, and then I also want to talk about some litigation that's going on. All right, so the first the first matter on the agenda, and then I'll, I think we'll have a side comment on this, but the first matter on the agenda is on, um, excuse me, where is it? So David, up to the closed applications now, right? The public hearings are done. 
the club public hearings are complete. You know, you know what though? I didn't ask on the last one if anyone had any comments. No one raised their hand, did they, Anna? That's correct. Nobody raised their hands. Okay. It's adjourned as well. So right. People can still speak. Mm -hmm. So Okay. The we have applications. Let's see. I guess the one I have in front of me is the we can talk about is twelve sixty Flagler. No, it's the next one was nine thirty five. Oh, nine thirty nine. Hold on. Application O seven A V twenty two. Yes. All right. We got the app. We got a resolution on this. This is the area one. Yes, I'm just looking at my notes. You have any questions on that? Anyone here? I have some problems with the resolution, actually. Okay. Yeah. Um, because I mean, just going down to the last uh, whereas clause on the first page, it says, "Whereas the applicant with encroaches within a new area." but does not increase the overall existing nonconformity. Well, if it's a new area, then it obviously has to increase the overall existing nonconformity. Those I, I two circled that. are completely- I circled that one as well. Um, so we need to say what it does. The fact that um, the there it doesn't increase the, the as I recall, and, and um, I couldn't find my, honestly, I couldn't find all my notes on this. And as I recall this, it doesn't increase the, um, the de depth of the side yard or the the, the side right. yard waiver, but um, but this wasn't a height, so I can't remember and I couldn't remember now. So I, where. yeah, I had does not uh, does not decrease the distance to the property line, and that's fine. That's okay. Right. So I I don't think we should have that whereas uh, yes. that last whereas on the first page. Right. I think we should add does not decrease the distance to the property line. Well, I think it needs wait, to wait, what they're doing. Like Brian, just, to be, the, just so for clarity, which which whereas on the bottom, please? The last one, whereas the project encroaches within yes, a okay, new right. area. Yeah. Okay. But I think it needs to say that um, it says expansion of the existing kitchen. Well, if it's expanding the existing kitchen, I think we need to say where the existing kitchen is expanding into. Because we're saying it's expanding, then we're saying they're here for a reason, right? They needed a variance. If they were expanding because they're increasing it within the footprint, they wouldn't need to be here. So we need it needs to say, because we have to understand that somebody in the future, somebody else on this property needs to understand what it is they're proposing to do. So where is it that the existing kitchen is being expanded to? Or- just is, is that a separate whereas clause than the one you just identified, or do you want to add that it's in? It's not there. It doesn't say anything. Okay, that, that was just confirming. Yeah, so I wanted to say something about it. And then um, my other problem that then it said, then then you go to the bottom of the second page, and it said the board recognizes well, the following. The before board. We, before we oh. move on, do we want to address that whereas clause and add language that the board would like to see in it? needs to say something about what it is that, the, that this, I think it needs to say what it is that this, where this. Um, so whereas the project encroaches. What is the, whereas the, the a project is, ex, when they expand, when they do this alteration, they're going to change something in the building. What is it that they're changing? Since they're coming for a variance, are they going higher? A lot of these are going higher. I couldn't remember. I remember the building and I remember where it is, but I couldn't remember exactly what they were doing. And so let well, me- Well, they're, what they're doing is they're they're combining the sunroom uh, and, and the kitchen. Uh, and then I think that they were creating another little uh, porch or seating area beyond that. So there's, there's actually gonna be not only changes within the footprint, but they're gonna they're gonna add a very small uh, portion, uh, which does not, uh, which again, this the the new build is is it does not stick out or or get closer to the property line. Now. 
I remember I pulled up the plan. I remember what they're doing. They're adding something behind the existing. Behind may not be the right word because it's got a it's it's not um, they're in a sense adding something behind the existing um, structure, right? So in the whereas clause above the one that is at issue is where we tried to explain the project as a defined term. But we don't. We say mm -hmm. the proposed addition includes transforming the sunroom into a breakfast room and the expansion of the existing kitchen. But expansion how? They're building behind the, in other words, as I recall, this isn't going up, but the, the setback right now um, is 24.5 feet. Uh, the existing setback is um, 13 feet, okay? They're still gonna be set back 13 feet, but it's gonna be set back 13 feet from a piece in the rear. It's not, I mean, what are they doing? I, who, I'm somebody, I'm looking at the plans and I'm not 100% sure now. Because my notes. I'm I'm looking at uh, what they sent us in the application. Yeah, that's what I'm looking at, and I'm trying to figure out. And if you can, if you have the answer to that, then that's what we need. Right, they're, they're, they're putting something behind, I think. They're expanding their kitchen by extending their kitchen out. But so they're just extending it out to the same. I've got it now. I've got it. I've got it open. It's okay. okay. They are building a new. Oh, I know. Yeah, this is, this is just what they're doing is the a portion. Okay, so the structure the house the dwelling is at an angle to the lot line yes and what they're doing is they're building a completely new structure a completely new piece of the house but given the way the house is situated on the lot that new structure the new addition is within the same 11.4 feet but it's in an area that before wasn't encroached. So they are encroaching onto more, an, they're encroaching onto an additional portion of the lot to, 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 for which they would need a set, which, for which they need a setback variance, but they're not going beyond the 11.4 feet, but there's a piece of the lot that before complied and now doesn't comply. Right, and I think in a, those three whereas clauses, the one that's at issue, and then if you look at the one above and the one at below, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think accurately describes that, but certainly the language is up to the board. Yeah, I don't think it says, it just says the existing, but it doesn't say what they're doing. And I'm looking at the, what they're planning to do. And you say a, a setback 13 point, oh, sorry, that's the Eastern is 11.4, right. Um, I could share this if anybody wants, I mean, you could look at its page, if you have the online agenda, it's page 181 of the online agenda that shows exactly what they're doing. It's the site plan and it shows exactly what they're doing. <clears throat> so right. below, below the whereas clause that's at issue, it says the applicants have requested the below area variances to permit the construction of the project which would permit new encroachments into the required side yard setback. However, such encroachments are no greater than the existing nonconformities. And then it well, lists- they, But they are, they're taking a greater area. So I don't think I would want to say they're not greater. They're in a new area, but I think the way Brian said it before, it does not um, increase the distance from the side yard, right? Okay. It does not decrease the distance from the side yard. Right makes requires it in a new piece of the property. And, and uh, honestly, I think probably the way to do it is 
uh, the expansion. Can you define the expansion? How many square feet is it? Right, that would do. I think that's okay. a good idea. So if you, you know, if you say that there's going to be X number of square feet uh, expansion, you know, which will be put in, but will not decrease the distance to the and property. And it will be non, will, 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 and so whatever that, I think if they gave us that area, I'm not sure they gave us the dimension, but a portion, and it might be there, but I'm not looking at all the pages, a portion of that addition will be within the required setback. However, it will not decrease it beyond the 11.4 feet that was previously yeah. existing. That's the point. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's fine with me. And then I have something at the bottom of the second page, Brian, or David, did you have something else before I go there? No, no, go ahead. Okay, so the bottom of the second page, the last whereas clause on the second page says, where the board recognizes the following. I don't think we recognize anything because this is both the findings and part of the whereas. So to the, ex so the first one says, the project seeks relief is currently non-conforming. That's, is that part of the whereas clause or is that a finding? We don't recognize so anything. We've if had these this... findings, then it should say the board finds because so... we have to make findings. That's a requirement of the code and village law. So we've had this conversation before. And if you have those statements in the whereas clauses, they are not findings. You would have to have them underneath. Right, but my point is there are no findings here. You haven't made, we recognize the following. There is no statement of finding. You have nothing that says the board finds. So we have made no findings the way it's worded. That's my problem. It needs to say the board makes the following findings. So <clears throat> it was your suggestion to add that, those types of things where you run through the balancing test to the whereas clauses. Would you no, like to no, I'm not saying we, we are, but you don't have any findings in this whole thing. There are no findings in here. So this Robin, resolution what, has no findings. So so what, what, what you're suggesting is simply adding that language right. to the last whereas clause. And it would say, whereas the board makes the following findings. Right, that's what we normally instead say. Instead of recognizes the following. Right, that's what we normally say. I'm not sure why this one says. Yeah, so the whereas the board makes the following findings. Okay. Okay. I can make that's that. Okay. I just would like the board to just note that findings should be under the findings and they're not really okay. appropriate under the whereas clauses. But that's then, what Robin then, just said. That's my point. But then, when, then what you need to do, Charlie, is write this then. The board makes the following findings without putting it in the whereas, okay, but that so isn't in here. We need to set forth the findings. That's a requirement of the law. There are no findings in this whole resolution. Okay, so don't previous try time I had don't... drafted it in that way. You guys had wanted me to put it in the whereas clauses. So I just wanted to clarity going forward. Do you guys want, when you make your determinations on the balancing test, to have those in the findings or in the whereas clauses? And make them in the findings. Okay, I'll move them. What do you what what, what do you think, Robin? I think that's fine. Oh. Um, based on the above, the board makes the following findings, something like that. Or, or based on the record. Yeah, whatever. Well, that's the, the above and the record, because it's also we've made some statements above. All right. So if it's gonna be the same thing though, we can we understand this. Okay. Yeah. Not saying that these are substantively um, I understand you. You're not saying it's substantive. We're, we're, right. We understand then. You. A uh, number two, okay, the last one, okay, now I go to some of the actual substance of this last whereas clause, which should be the findings. So number one says the roof on the proposed addition will not exceed the height of the roof over the principal portion of the residence. I'm not sure that's relevant to anything since height is not at issue here. I would take that sentence out. What number is that under, Robin? One. Okay. The last sentence of one. I would just take that out. The last sentence of what? The roof. The roof on the proposed addition doesn't exceed the height over the of the roof over the principal portion of the resident. I don't see why that's relevant. So it's a permitted period. 
even if it exceeded it, it could care. I don't see how it's relevant to our determinations to whether the variance is appropriate. Because it would be, the, if anything, maybe the height of the building, but the roof, so I would take out that last sentence. So I'm struggling to find it. Yeah, so am I. Oh, sorry, I I'm looking at the I, wrong one. I moved on to another one. I take it back. I apologize. I pulled, I opened up the accidentally opened up another one. Okay. Apologize. That's why I couldn't find it. Now I see what happened. Never mind. Um, number three. Oh, yeah. The roof is on the flood house. Uh, is on the flood yeah, I missed house. Yeah, so the I garage. Missed, oh, yeah. No, it's, it, yeah, I apologize. Um, so on this one, right, 935 Sylvan, I got it now. The, I would take out the area variances. Are, it says the area variances are not substantial, but they do not increase the pre-existing nonconformity. They do exist, increase the nonconformity. I can just add the same language that we added before. Yeah. Does not decrease. Right. Does not okay. decrease the distance to the property line. So. But that to me does not, right. I'm not sure that's the only reason it's not substantial because if they were increased. Let's assume. Let me just ask this as a as a as a question. And again, I'm not substant. I don't have a problem not arguing with this. I just want to make sure that we get this right, so that again, in the future, somebody looks at this, they understand it, and also somebody. It's now a precedent. We don't have an issue. Suppose that I was the applicant here, or or, or another property, and I have an existing nonconformity, and instead of just having a little piece, now now I made my entire property. So before I had a dimension of three feet, right? I had an area of 50 square feet within the non-conforming side yard. And now I change it to an area of 400 square feet within the non-conforming side yard. Based on this statement, that would be okay. But I don't think that's true. I well, hold it, Robin, hold it. That's a relative issue. Right. It's a relative issue based upon all the circumstances. Correct of the area, if there's a brick wall up and it has no impact on somebody else's property, then you know that's where we get the weights and balances. I hear what you're saying. Uh, I'm saying we need to say this differently. It is not, the problem isn't that, it's not not substantial because it doesn't increase that distance. It's not substantial because it's only a small portion and it doesn't. Well, that and the fact that during our deliberations, we saw the fact that there's a road that goes in between the property and another property. Only, right, right. That, we could say other things. I just don't screening. think that the way this one is, all I'm saying is the way this is set out doesn't work for me. Okay, well, you I can, don't think we can say it's you not. Could just, you could justify it a little bit more detailed if you wish. I don't think that's the, that's the reason it's not substantial. That's my well, point. Later on in that number three, it says, and only a small portion of the project encroaches within the new area of the required. I would take out, they do not increase the pre existing non conformity because. Yeah, I took that out already. Oh, then the rest is fine because okay. only a small portion of the project encroaches within a new area. Okay. Right. And, he, and he does have in number one the fact that it does not negatively impact yeah. uh, the environment and, and, and other people. And, you know, I do specifically remember when we were deliberating on this, the fact that there is a, a GAN in between this property and the nearest neighbor. Right. Uh, there's a, screening, there's a road. Maybe there's we like, should put that into the, into the whereas clauses. That's relevant to our consideration. Whereas the adjacent property, that, that, they, that the property on this side of the uh, property is a road or a right we should say that because then it's clear that they're not interfering with a neighbor that's relevant well i i you know i i wouldn't want that to hold up the vote but i think that you I, know we, i don't think where this is going to hold up the vote brian i'm just right we could we could agree we could we agree we could agree to vote and i i certainly think that uh those are relevant factors that we could pick up from the uh you know right. i think uh, from the video sure i think you should just say that um charlie add a sentence that says, whereas the adjacent property on this, on the whichever east side of this, the adjacent property is a road. There is no house, you know, something like that. Well, so I, I, I think that there is a road between this property and any other adjacent property on that side. Fine. That's fine with me. Okay. And, and I believe that there's screening too. There's, there's good foliage. Mm -hmm.
I have language about the screening and buffering in number one. Okay. Um, fine. I also have uh information about how the neighbors have submitted letters of support and i'll add about the i think it's a driveway on that flag lot right yeah and it should be aware that should be a whereas clause because that's a whereas as part of the basis for our findings yeah i don't know if it's a driveway or a private road to more than one uh place so just take a look at whatever it is and and put you know put it in accurately yep. Is there any other comments? Uh, okay, so if no comments, I'm, I'll just so we can move this. I make a motion to approve the resolution as amended today. I second the motion. Brian? Yes. Robin? Yes. Sorry, David, I just wanted to move it. No, 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 and I vote yes, and, and I vote yes, all right. All right, now, will I get a copy and are you gonna circulate that copy to Brian and Robin? Charlie, yeah. I just would like their, their informal confirmation that it meets their, they put a lot of time into this, as you know. Yep, I'll send around a red line. Okay. Um, I need to take a, a couple minute break and I'll be right back. So I can't Sounds continue, like unfortunately, because because, you know, Five but anyway, so. Charlie, I have a question for you. I'm going to give you a call, okay? Are you there, Charlie? Yeah. Oh, let me see if I can get a call. Uh, you have your phone, Charlie, you want to just call me? Can you do that? No, guess not. Okay. Do you guys want me to pause the recording? Yeah, I guess. Well, we, we can. Yeah, why don't you? We, we're, we're taking a five minute recess. Which is, Dave, I would just another, mute, I which would is just, another way of saying eight minutes. I would just mute your. Yeah, thank you, Charlie. Uh, Great. Okay, recording has resumed. Okay, one second. Okay. The next matter on our agenda is on the uh, application of Frank and Nina Cooper. Okay. Um, just need one more minute. No, I'll be there. Okay. The um, yeah, this warrants a little preface. Okay. There were hearings on this, I believe, February three, March three, and in April. Um was closed on April 7, I believe, subject to the receipt of some materials that were received. On May 5th, there were deliberations and a request was made for the draft resolution. It was put on the agenda. Um, the commentary I need to make now, just to make, I want to be completely transparent about this, is that this afternoon at about 4.30, 4.40, um, Wadrina from the village contacted, I guess it was initially uh, Charlie and the copy to me to remove the item from the agenda because it, she was directed to do so by the village manager. Oh. Because they had not received some information. 
<clears throat> and the building inspector said she had to do what the village manager said. Um, I'll just digress for a minute. This was the second time there's been a change in the agenda that I had nothing to do with. The last time the agenda was revised and all of the resolutions were, that were on there in case we wanted to discuss them were removed. I had nothing to do with that. Um, we'll come to that in a minute. Charlie responded that he uh, didn't know what information was, was and that all the information that the zoning board had wanted was received. <clears throat> um, I guess at that point, Frank called Charlie, the building inspector, to say basically, and this has nothing to do with the hearing of substance, that he was waiting for something on the FEMA cost, but that, that didn't have anything to do with the area variance. Uh, Frank also uh, heard from the attorney for the applicant who said, yeah, that's something to do with the building permit. They get into the cost and then what the requirements are, if it's gonna have FEMA uh, requirement or not, uh, but it doesn't impact the area variance. Um, after 5 p.m., I believe, I'm correct, you correct me in a moment. I believe uh, you got you heard from the village manager an email to Charlie, basically saying uh, that he, he said that, I'm gonna read it. Don't pull from agenda. I know that it is not fair or appropriate. Charlie simply needs to advise the ZBA that Frank asked for detailed cost estimates and they have not provided yet. That will determine if a FEMA review is warranted or not. After that, it's their call. And that's from the village manager. So I need to comment, and then you can hear from Charlie. It's basically under state law, we're a quasi-judicial body. Um, and village code respects that dramatically to the extent that in the village code, it says that we have exclusive, and that's not, that's the word, quote, exclusive jurisdiction of all matters prescribed by 7-712 of the village law or by this chapter. Uh, and the following powers that they then list and duties, quote, shall not be deemed to limit any power conferred by law upon the Board of Appeals. And it goes through that and says that, and it says um, we're to exercise 392, another section of the code says, the duties of the board shall be exercised in accordance with its own rules of conduct and procedures. Uh, which shall be consistent with the provisions of New York Village Law, as are our powers or duties. Um, I probably served about 20, I don't know, it's been a while, 27 years on the board at different times, and I've never had this. I think the part of it is that we're quasi-judicial, which is very unusual and very different. It puts us in a different standing. We've usually always had separate counsel, and Many times the village has actually appeared before us, sometimes for applications and other times to comment. Um, so I will deal with, and I am taking up, and you will receive copies of letters to the appropriate authorities in New York to deal with this because this can't be, this is a zoning board. If there's a, our resolutions are always subject to compliance with all others. So, Charlie, if you want to just supplement what I said or confirm what you would said to tell us, or that's up to you. But. Sure. So I had a I had a conversation with um, the building inspector as well as the applicant's attorney. Um, the building department received or, or requested uh, a breakdown of construction costs because there are certain FEMA regulations that, based on construction cost, it might change the elevation of the building. Um, and that was information uh, that the village building department is waiting for from the applicant. I also spoke with the applicant's attorney um, and <clears throat> their position is that those construction cost estimates will be provided, but that's a building permit issue and would be reviewed at that time. Um, it's my, my thought that the construction estimate and compliance with FEMA and so forth and so on um, does not impact um, this board's review of the requested area variances. It is a building department issue. It's a FEMA compliance issue. Now, if um, you know the construction estimates go to the building department, the building department makes some determination that the building 
or the structure needs to be raised or modified in some manner. And if that changes the area variances, certainly they would have to come back to this board. Um, but it's my understanding that it's not expected to change any area variances or increase any variances or add new variances. Was that indicated to you by anyone else or that's your own finding or it's consistent with others? Uh, that's, that's my own kind of um, uh, thoughts on both my discussions with the building department and the applicant's attorney. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, we, we had actually gone over this a little bit. Uh, I was asking about the height of the current proposed project, because in fact, if FEMA did require them to lift the residents because they're at a 14 VE zone, uh, and I believe that their their current structure, I think they're currently at a 12 and a half, uh, that even if you lifted the building, you'd still be within the height requirements. That would not require a new variance. However, um, it would change uh, what we're looking at because uh, there would be ground disturbance, a significant ground disturbance uh, I believe because they'd, you know, they'd have to raise the whole structure and, and put in a new foundation. But, uh, you know, it's my understanding that, you know, they're asking for a variance based on this plan. That's correct. And, uh, you know, I don't necessarily think that anything uh, should get in the way of us deliberating on this specific plan. If this plan turns out to you know, not be viable under, you know, some other regulation, then they just got a variance for something they can't build. Brian, I agree with your conclusion. I, I want to just point out, though, that I, I my, my concern and my pointing this out was not so we would deliberate on whether or not it's appropriate or not. We have a closed hearing. We have a record before us. And never have I ever had an occasion in my life when somebody would come and say, Oh, well, we didn't raise this at the hearings that you had. We're talking about four times we, we met on this. Uh, and if they don't give us this, you can't consider this and we can remove it from the agenda. That's just not how zoning works. That's not how village law requires us. Many, many years ago, the state pulled zoning standards and instead of even enacting, first they did it with a case called Otto versus Steinhelber, and then they did it by enacting it legislatively because they wanted this independence. And I'm just, the reason I'm giving the background is I don't wanna, I don't quite understand what's going on here. And, but it's, I don't think it should have, it has any, I don't think legally it has any bearing on us. And I don't think uh, conceptually, I mean, I don't, if, obviously if they, the plan is what we're approving and it's subject to compliance with the legal requirements, it always is. We don't do that. They need planning. They need planning. If they need the county for something, they get the county. If they need the state, they, we don't issue liquor licenses. It, it's rather simple to, to me on this. Well, I, think, I think there's a couple of things here. One, we don't have all of our members here this evening. Uh, and uh, I guess I would like to hear from you whether or not you want to go forward and deliberate on this or whether or not uh, we should adjourn it until uh, we clear the matter up because we do have other applicants waiting. Well, I don't know when you say clear the matter up. I don't intend to, unless somebody, unless the board unanimously wants to reopen the hearing, which I would be adverse to, because I don't know why it would be reopened. This would be, this is not a matter of before us. This is not a matter of our concern. If the applicant went through everything it did and it can't utilize the variance it gets, well then, that doesn't, that's, that's an applicant's problem, not ours. And there's been never been an occasion. That would be like someone saying until they get the planning board approval. It's actually the other way around. You can't actually even ask usually for the permits until you have the variances. So it's at least one court has held getting planning board approval before you get a variance is a nullity. And uh, Supreme Suffolk was the case, was, was the court, I believe. But my point is, I, I just think it's a matter of we're dealing with this and not delaying someone till the end of July or whenever date it is. And we're past the time, we're, today is our deadline on this and this person has been through enough. 
I thought we had deliberated on this and had something drafted. We did. It's so then I don't know. I mean, I think Charlie is, I think, indicated that there's no no impediment to us proceeding, right? I don't understand what I honestly don't understand what the issue is here. The village manager or the building inspector raised a concern that they didn't submit everything they need in order to get their FEMA sign off. Right. Okay. So they what? Didn't. Right. FEMA sign off is not a freeway. I mean, we're going far afield considering the independence of the ZBA. I don't think any of that's relevant. I think it's very simple. We have an application before us. There's nothing in the ZBA requirements that says they have to get a FEMA determination. Absolutely. We can, we can consider and vote on a resolution approving a variance or denying a variance, whatever we're going to do, um, for this particular plan. Right that they're showing to us. If at the end of the day, they forget this, they changed their mind and didn't want to build it, then they wouldn't build it. Of if they course. decide that they wanted to build it 10 feet taller, they'd have to come up. So I don't think the fact that if it turns out if FEMA, if there's something that FEMA needs, and it turns out that at the end of the day, they have to recite or change the plan, they're going to have to come back and get a new variance oh, or Robin, something. you're preaching I don't to the see part. the Robert, and that's and that's and that is exactly what I said. As that's well. exactly what I feel. I, it's exactly I, but I feel a little bit worse. I've never seen. I find this very very unusual that our agenda is, is being impacted. And I mean, that's well, wait, always this, David. I think there's two different issues here. The fact yeah. that someone else is amending our agenda is a huge issue, and no one else has the power under the. Un, forget everything else. Doesn't matter. There's nobody has the power under village law or our zoning code to change the agenda except the ZBA. Whether who, you know, there's nothing that says it has to be the chair, maybe we vote on it, who knows, but there's nobody else that has the power to amend the agenda. Um, so I don't, that's a different issue. The fact that somebody's amending the agenda is a separate issue. The no, no, but he was, okay. but, wait, no, no, but a, the reason, a me, issue. Bobby, let me, find, the reason that I pointed this out is, because there was a, a direction that saying uh, to Charlie to say he was supposed to give us advice that we couldn't do it, which makes no sense. And Charlie acknowledges that none of this makes any sense. Yeah. I just wanted all I wanted to do was be transparent because I felt lately, in case no one knows, there's been a lot of things going on. I got some letters the other day saying that uh, apparently there's complaints about me not communicating, which I find somewhat humorous since I have three phone numbers and staffing at one of them. But such is life. So okay, I just but wanted hold to on, hold yeah. on. One more issue. Please. If somebody, not us, stepped in and notified the applicant and their counsel uh, that this has been removed from the agenda, uh, can we go forward with their deliberations? We uh, didn't remove it. It was not removed. First of all, it was not removed at all. Um, because Charlie, I believe, wrote and said the only person that could remove it was me. And secondly, I said, we're not removing it. And we're not. It happened the other day when everything was changed on our agenda. And I mean, I can't. Okay, have so, I, I, I so said, we will Alicia, deal with that. I will deal with that on behalf. You will get copies. Yeah. Uh, uh, Alicia, is there anybody from the applicant uh, viewing us tonight? Can you see whether or not uh, the Coopers or their attorney are watching these proceedings? But remember, Brian, you can watch it on TV. Here. You can watch this on oh. TV. You can watch it on okay. Zoom. You can watch it live without having signed in. I just see that there's in. that there's 15 in. participants on right now. I'm sure. I can shed some light on that. I, I spoke with the applicant's attorney um, this afternoon uh, when this was kind of occurring. I notified her that it would remain on the agenda. Okay, uh, fine. Yeah. Fine. Asked and answered. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So. We have a resolution drafted pursuant to our request. Um, I have a lot of comments on the resolution. Yeah, go ahead. You know, why don't you start? I had a, there was some dates and some things, but um, well, I noticed the the dates seemed wrong, but I you just went through them already. No, no, but okay. I went through some of the dates are in it. Like November three, two thousand twenty-two, has not yet occurred. Well, there's also November 15, nineteen ninety. Are, are those proper historical dates? Well, wait, let's go. So before we get there, let's just go through. So yeah. there is an entire, there are, so on the first page, there's a whereas clause that lists a bunch of applications that were submitted to the building inspector. 
a bunch of documents. Now, we have never, as far as I recall, ever listed documents submitted to the building inspector. And I don't see any reason to include that here. So I want to take the entire whereas clause out. So that is the... Whereas the applicants through their attorney submitted the following documents to the village building inspector. I want to take that entire paragraph out. Charlie, I think you intimated to me that you wanted to ensure that this this uh, resolution is is very detailed for our benefit. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. But I don't think why anything... Oh, wait, yeah, Robin, you made your point. Let, but let Charlie answer, because I think it's important because... That's the record. That's this is an appeal from the building inspector, right? But remember, we have the li a list then of the applicant of the documents submitted to us, which is in many cases the same documents, and what okay. was submitted to us is what's okay. relevant, not what was submitted to the okay, building. But I don't inspector. think it's irrelevant. I understand, but I don't think it's irrelevant. I, I mean, have a real problem with it. You have a real, real problem, problem with it? it? What's yes. the real problem with it? I don't want to have it in here. I don't want to. There's a. There's no reason to put this in. Period. And a lot of what they what they stuck in. I mean, it's again repeated for what they submitted to us. Since nothing is relevant, the building inspector issued a, um, uh, basically a denial and said you need a variance. And then they came here. We then they filed an application here. We were submitted with the documents provided to us. We Charlie, were not does, given it, Charlie does it. Charlie does it make a difference file? if we take that out? No, they are part of the record regardless. The only intent okay. was um, that this application is getting a lot of attention, and we wanted to make sure it is incredibly comprehensive. I don't have a problem with it, but Robin does. So let's I go. really do. Well, can... Okay, let me ask you this question. Charlie, how do you know this was submitted to the building inspector? Did, did anybody come to the board and say, see these documents that were submitted to the building inspector? No, they didn't. We don't even know this was submitted. How can we say this? So I would take it out. Okay. Um, I was going to say, why are we listing all the documents submitted to the ZBA since we've never done that before, but if you have some concerns and you want to list it, I'm, f I'm okay with it. Okay. So what else on the first page? Anything else? You want that out, right? That, so one that, out. that starts with, um, so that's the, the third, one, two, three, the fourth, whereas you want it removed, right? Yes. Okay, fine. And I, I, and Brian, I, Brian, please. I, I will say that, you know, I, I did have some issues with a couple of things on those lists because I couldn't find them. Yeah, I mean, so, I don't know that we ever saw. Okay, what you said said that. Let's I move ahead. We'll be here till four, and I'm not going to be. Okay, so then, okay, so whereas the village made a determination that the area variances were required for the project. Okay, fine. How do you segue from, I guess, the project? Have we defined the project up to that? Oh yeah, you defined yes. it in the second whereas. Okay, fine. All right, next on page two. Do we need the word initial before public hearing? Well, wait a minute. Before, uh, um, before you get there, there's a list of documents. These documents were not all submitted on January 13th, 2022. Some of these Submitted documents. An application of the same requesting interpretation. No, no. Whereas the applicant through the return. No, 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 no. And I understand. So the words along with the following. Correct. Is is the is the issue? So it's the okay. So you're saying. Whereas someone, they submitted an application. Whereas during you, if you want to list the documents, then we can say right. during the pendency of this application. Exactly. Documents were submitted. Fine. Exactly. Or you can just say, and the applicant submitted the following. The pendency it may have been before. The, it may have been at the inception. Some of them. So just say, and whereas the applicant submitted the following. That's so, fine. Yeah. That's okay. okay. That's good fine. With Charlie. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. Fine. Then that's that list. Whereas the applicants appeared before the same for. Do you need the word initial? I I, I don't know. You you no, might. Take it out. All right. You want it? I don't care. It's it's just an odd word. It's 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 a pre. Okay, I took it out. 
The applicant submitted the DBA letter withdrawing its request for, okay. The area. I, I think that the second, the next to our ask clause should say, um, after the public here, I mean, the point is, the, the, the reason they withdrew their application for a, an interpretation was because we essentially told them that we wouldn't consider it because we do this all the time. So, um, well, they withdrew it. I mean, do you need to have a reason why? Well, we're saying things like they did it by letter. We wouldn't, they, it's not saying we just, they just withdrew it. So the applicant um, withdrew the request for an interpretation. And so they didn't withdraw the request. Oh, right. So they withdrew the request for an, uh, maybe, seems to me, but that's fine. For an interpretation that. That's okay. It's fine. Area. Yeah, that's, that's, okay. that's what they did. That's what they did. That's fine. I don't, we don't need to get into the why they did it because we told them that's why we've done, you know, that's fine. Okay. Uh, applicants submitted the following supplemental materials on March 3. Is that right? Or do you want to list this in the master list? I think we should just list in the master list all yeah. the documents that they Charlie, submitted. Charlie, okay? Yep. Charlie, so you're going to take the, 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 the five, the one, two, three, four, five items in the on page three and move them under the other list that's on page two, right? Yep, I will just tell you my intention for what it's worth okay. is that you know you had the public hearing on February 3rd and the submission on February 17th was essentially a response to comments on questions that were asked during the public hearing. So it shows that the board was diligent in asking questions, the public had comments, and then the applicant was diligent in responding to those. And that's why I had it timed That's out. a good point. I like oh, that. Well, here's my problem with that. Now that I know that point, there's something else that never is said in here and is one of my concerns with this whole um, resolution. Never in this application, and we need to say in this resolution, because we generally said we have in the past said this, and I think we need to say it, that we say nothing about the neighbors who appeared in opposition, submitted lots of materials in opposition. I think all of that is relevant. It looks now, if you read this resolution, that they submitted this stuff and then we voted and there was no opposition and everything was hunky-dory and that's just wrong. But Robin, we're not there yet. We're at the point of where to put these items. I understand that, but my point is he doesn't have anywhere with the opposition. Well, I know, but we haven't. So you'll bring that up. But right now we're in the middle of a sentence saying, what do you want to do with these five items? Is right. I understand. And my point is that. I know your point. Charlie, well, no, I'm... no, no. David, Charlie's making the point that he wants to have these submit this, this no. listed this way to indicate that the board was, was asking a lot of questions and that the board responded, whatever. But he never said anything. If we're going to do this, then it seems to me that we should say that, oh, I, I well, understand. there were a lot of other things submitted by other people. And I'm, not, I'm not disagreeing with you. What I'm saying is, I know we need to the, finish the first sentence that you started. The first, the issue we were discussing was, do you want this one separate or do you want it moved to the, the grouping of the others? That I'm has right. nothing to do with what the other people yeah, did. It does. It does. We'll come to that. And, and maybe I wasn't clear. Um, Charlie said the reason he wanted to break it out this way was to show that they came to the board and then they responded to questions that the board had. But they were also responding to the comments and arguments and submittals prepared by their neighbors in opposition. And we, and we haven't said anything like that. So given that this is the reason you want to say it this way, Charlie, do we need to say Whereas other people also submitted lots of materials. Yes. Right. I so, yeah. you know, I think Robin is right that if yes. you're going to do something where you're going to show chronologically, uh, you know, asked, answered, asked, answered, uh, that perhaps uh, before this whereas clause, uh, you should always put in, uh, you, you know, uh, uh, members of the community whatever you want to say, neighbors or association uh, uh, submitted um, X documents because they, they also submitted documents, um, you know, and then when you get to this, uh, you know, you'll, you'll show what they, what they answered. And then uh, I think we should have, yeah, I'm sorry. Each, each time, if you if, if you want to stay in chronological order, 
um, you, you would have to sandwich in what uh, what everybody else was saying because it was a significant portion of uh, of what we we're hearing. We we're hearing uh, uh, more than one side to this, uh, you know, from various neighbors and from the applicants themselves, uh, and it actually changed the plan uh, yes. as we went along. Right, uh, which I think is 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 very relevant for our considerations because you know let's say they did not you know if you remember they got rid of some of the blinds the blind screening which created this 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 bulk in, in right. the view and that was a direct compromise uh, based upon the complaints and that's something that we take into consideration uh, you know if we were to approve this you know that the applicant actually went uh, you know, and re responded to certain complaints by decreasing the the uh, uh, you know the the bulk in 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 the setback uh, that would impact the view. So um, my concern is Brian that if we if I don't know what Charlie you think of this, but if if we do this back and forth, then the problem is uh, it's just one more thing to find an error in if, because they, they, we're not perfect. So maybe we just list everything they gave. That's what you want to do. And then we make a reference separately to whereas the neighbors on two sides. Well, listen, you know, I mean, we're not I, writing I, a brief here. I, I, I agree with you that we're not going to be able to create an accurate treatise, nor do we have to, because everything is, you know, right. part of the public record. Correct. Uh, so I, I wouldn't mind you lumping everything together as long as we're consistent. These are all the documents that that the that, that the applicant and, and their counsel and their architect gave us throughout the course of our hearings. These are all the but there should also be these are all the documents that were provided to us uh, uh, by neighbors and concerned parties. Uh, uh, you know, it was two, there were two neighbors, right? Well, there were there were two neighbors, but there was also uh, involvement of the homeowners association. Well, it was it was not the association; it was just the officers of the board of it, right? Yeah, but I think there was even a document that they that they wrote. It was a submittal. Yes, yeah, somebody submitted yeah. a copy of a document from. The no, because I remember asking the question of one of them. I said, "Is this voted on by everybody?" And the guy said, "No." It was like I think it's to. To kind of put this into context, I think it's a good idea to reference the other submittals. Sure. I will yeah. add those. All right. Yeah, sometimes zoning boards will actually mark everything as an exhibit as they go. So then if you want to move this up and lump this all together and just use your preface that says, instead of saying along with the following and during the course of the proceedings, submitted the following. I think, I think Charlie said he was going to add a new whereas clause that said something like, okay. whereas during the course of the hearings the, of, of the, the whatever, the applicant submitted the following documents. So okay, fair enough. Okay. Something right. like that. I don't remember exactly what you All said, right. Charlie, but it was something like that. So th that whole list then is moving. So one location, right? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Well, that's contrary to, so I initially said I wanted it in chronological order to show that there was a public hearing and then there were submissions and there was a public hearing, then there were submissions and the board had thought that was a good idea right. and they wanted the opposition um, to the project, their submissions listed. So I can you add- have, you, know, you have a list of their submissions? Yes. Okay. All right. And do it the anything, all right. it, it's all in the record and- All right. Including yeah, but you want to do it that way, Brian and Robin? You want to have them yeah, do that's it okay. chronologically? That's fine. Yeah, if you can do that's it. That's fine. Yep. I'm it's, impressed it's, that you have that information. Robin and I would be scratching for that. <laughs> well, I mean, it even, it's true. it even shows up on the agenda. It shows when things yeah. were submitted. Right. Okay. All right. So then that, that takes us through page three. Am I right? Before the yeah before the whereas the applicants will, will continue discussion well, actually on the top of page three uh i don't know if these dates are correct i i don't see the i don't have my comprehensive but it says november 15th 1990 the zba resolution granting an area variance was that historically what happened 
That was the date of the area variance that they submitted that was relevant to the property, but I will okay. confirm the dates. All um, right. So, so, so that's, so the fact that it happened 32 years ago is not a mistake. Right. Okay. On the, on the first, on the first, whereas that follows that you said the applicants, the applicant appeared on March 3, 2022. I, I don't like the word for continued discussions. It's for the public hearing. Right. Why don't we just say, yeah, I thought we could just say where there were additional public hearings on March 3rd and April 7th, at which the applicant appeared and made additional presentation or something. So oh. Well, except, except no, except if you want the chronology, then you, you, you don't go. Oh, right, then you can't yeah. do that. Yeah, yeah right. you can't do that. It's March 3, then it's March 9. Right. Right. And then the applicant appeared before on April 7th for continued review of the for continued hearing. I just don't want review. These, these are not, this not planned. Hearing. Yeah, for continued hearing. Right. And at the meeting closed the public and at the, the ZBA closed the public hearing, leaving the written comment period open until was it a general written comment period? I thought it was a very specific one. For we we kept it open. For, spec for specified submission. It was the submission of the change. I can put provide. Yeah, yeah. It, you, do you remember what I mean, Robin O'Brien? It, it was a specific thing. Yes, it, was, it was a specific thing. It was a thing up, for the, the change was. from the volume, the volume, remember? Yeah. Yes. I yeah. Yes. Yes. yeah, just, just, yeah, because you can't, I don't like things just open, you know? But, Providing for a limited written comment period, or for for for, for, a spe for a limit on on specific item, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah, because you you asked how right. uh, the I'm, increase related right. to the overall size right. of the Precise. house Precise. And, on the volume, right? Exactly. And, and they gave us they gave us two numbers on that. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, at the bottom of page. Three. I hold There's on. Is there anything else before that on the? So where's my letter? The attorney, the applicant submitted to the ZBA. Oh, that's the April twenty-one letter. All right. Okay. So the next clause is whereas the applicant's January thirteenth, twenty twenty-two application included. Well, why? If you want to do it in chronological order, why is this thing here and not up with the earlier chronology? I didn't understand why this was totally separate. Good point. Why is this? Yeah, is that and the, I was confused. And if you want to say that, and if the point of this paragraph was merely to say what the existing conditions are, then I don't think it's relevant when they submitted it. Okay. And I would say, whereas the applicants' uh, materials showed that the existing well, except we have to we accept. Oh, I see. Yeah, I, Robin's right. Yeah, but but whereas the applicants' materials showed that because right. it was well, already this, submitted, the date doesn't matter. Right. Oh, wait a second. Is this though, was this the, the, the January 13th? Was that new materials? No, it was the survey that was provided with the application. Right, that's what I'm saying. It makes no sense to oh, be. So careful. it's already referenced above. Yeah, so I'm just. Okay, yeah, okay fine. Up. So I put down Zap. Okay, yeah, I got you. Yeah, I agree. All right. Okay. All right, page three or four, anybody? Speaketh. Okay, yes, I have a, um, uh, well, so, so this is a, the, um, so I don't understand why we have a whereas the project will slightly decrease the existing floor area ratio nonconformity and therefore no, I don't think that's necessary. Do we need to say that? They're not expanding the Think, not for, I think it's all relevant is they're not increasing it. So all that's relevant is they're not increasing it. The reason no variance is required is not because they're decreasing it, but because they're not increasing it. So well, if you want to say something about it, then I would say the project will not increase the f existing floor area nonconformity. And may in fact, and in fact, will decrease it slightly. Yeah, I, think, I put I in the, I put in that language to yeah, show right. that the change that they're making 
is decreasing an existing nonconformity. Yeah, but that's not the reason they don't need the floor a variance. The reason they don't need the variance is because it's not increasing it. So, so I was going to right. propose taking out and therefore no area variances for floor areas required and just leaving it at that. That's fine. That will slightly decrease the existing. That's fine. Floor. Yeah. That's fine. Okay. I'm okay yeah. with that. Okay. Anything else there? The following findings. Okay. Oh, you actually put that in the findings too. Yeah. Yeah, see, this is fine because this makes findings. The one that yeah, I this is nice. This is nice. I yeah, like the way it is fine. Very well done, Charles. Um, What's that? I said very well done, but I said it in a squeaky voice. Oh, it's I was like, who was that? Is there public comment session? Didn't, oh, the way the last on page four, the last um, we deliberated at May fifth and May not May thirty first, and today we deliberated at it's May fifth and June. Second. Right. Well, he wrote this before somebody I understand changed that, but I'm just our telling agenda. Him to put that in. Yep. Right. So yeah. we were supposed to be seeing this on Tuesday, but yeah, there... but it didn't even have the Tuesday date, and it didn't have anything except the May fifth date. So it would have had needed a second date, whatever that date was. Oh, I thought that he had May thirty first in here, and we were not. We did not no. see it. No. Oh, okay. At its May 5th and June 2nd. Right. 2nd. Charlie, you'll track this, right? Yeah, I'm doing it in track changes. Thank you, sir. And I, th I think you need to, you do need to say something about the opposition. Sorry, I know we've said that, but I want to. Yeah, you're going to put that in, Charlie, somewhere? And then they, there's, the opposition was by. The two neighbors. We usually say, because we usually say the name, when, when neighbors have appeared and said they don't have objection, we say that. I think we need to say where the neighbors on both sides submitted, um, opposed the, uh, the the application and submitted the following materials, and if you want to have it in chronology, what were the grounds that they, we want to put it on the grounds? What that it would obstruct their view? Isn't that the grounds? I think if, just saying if they opposed it and then list what they submitted, then fine, 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 fine. Right, and do you fine. want to break that down between twelve eighty Flagler and twelve forty Flagler? And do you want to put it in chronological order, also, like you're doing for this one? I think the way to do it is to know who submitted what in chronological order. Fine. Okay. 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 Um, in the resolution, first now therefore be a resolve clause. <coughs> Hmm. Get into my witching hour, guys. Um, there's a sentence that said these area variances will permit the project to be improved 16. What page, point, Robin? Uh, page it's five. on page four. Well, no, my oh, page. Sorry. Yeah, I saw I edited it and tracked changes for myself so I know what I changed. And David, so it's the first now, therefore be it resolved. Right. It's right. The second there's, sentence. There's a sentence that says these area variances will permit the project to be improved. Do we need that sentence in there? I mean, oh. I don't really have a problem with it. I just, it's not something I usually, usually see. Yeah, well, also it's, we'll permit the project to be improved. Yeah, and that's right. Well, we'll permit the project to, or whatever, but these are from the summer. I think you could take the sentence out. Yeah, because it, it, we're, not, we're not changing the distance to the property line. Right. So we're not improving it to, to that. It, it, that's, that, <laughs> condition is currently existing we're adding volume i can um take that out and what i'll do is where i list the area variances i'll make that a defined term of area variance with capital a capital <coughs> okay let's reference that 
Fair enough. And, and okay, so the first uh, finding C says the requested area variances do not create any additional nonconformities or further or increase further. It's not increase further, it's extend further. Okay. Extend yeah. pre existing nonconforming. Very well. I like that. That's good. Um, yeah, then that's, in that's good. 2B, it says, um, other means of for achieving the same, just the English, and we don't know that. So we all we know is that the applicant said that other methods would create. I can come up with, um, oh, well. What, what, uh, what, what point are you on, what letter? B, the question of other means for achieving this meth, same benefit would create Increased impervious oh, surface. Oh, 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 wrong okay, I'm I don't know if that's, we didn't have them show, you know, that we asked them, they told us. We didn't get plans. I would, um, I'm a little, I'm a little troubled with making a definitive statement that says um, we have made a finding that if anything else wouldn't work. Well, hold on. Let me, let me say one thing. The benefit that they're specifically seeking here why they're building, you know, the way they're building it was the specific benefit was to create usable space where they just have the dormers and to stay above the current foundation. That is a specific benefit that they're looking for that they cannot achieve through any other means. They could build somewhere else to get more square footage, but that's not specifically what they said. They said, look, we have these dormers and, and we have the roof coming down there. And so we have the floor ratio, but we don't have the height. That is a specific benefit that cannot be done any other way. But I don't think they were, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure that's right. I mean, they said that, but it was really in the context of what they were doing. They're not, they weren't coming in and saying, we have some dormers. And so we need to fill in the space. They were expanding their building. They needed to expand it and they made a decision that a good place to expand it was within the dormers. But they didn't ex they didn't fill in the dormers because it's like, we have dormers, so we need to fill it in. No, they were expanding the floors. They said, increase. no, no, hold it. No, they're, they're, they're saying, they said two things specifically. They're not expanding the floor over in that area. The floor exists. What doesn't exist is the height because the walls come down and you have dormers come out. So they wanted, they, they, they specifically said that they want to create ceilings right there. And they also want to, they want to have those sides of the building over the current foundation for support. So they did specifically say that you know the the floors are already there but we can't use them because you know the the, the roof right. slopes down exactly over. but my point is they wanted to have increased their amount of usable space that's my point they weren't just raising the roof because we have to raise the roof because we have this they could have left the existing building the way it is and nothing would have required them to change anything so they were doing it this way they were increasing usable space and how they were increasing usable space was by re redesigning they're completely redesigning the house um and by they're raising the roof so i don't want to say they did it for two specific reasons to fill in the dormers that's how they were doing they also certainly said that to do anything else, that if they put the floor area anywhere else, it would require them to increase the impervious surface. They did specifically say that. Okay, and what I'm trying to say here is, are you on 2B? Yes. Yeah. Okay, what they're saying is other means of achieving this same benefit. Right. And I'm saying there this same benefit, there is no, it's completely unique that they have a floor uh, where they just don't have the ceiling height over the floor. So in order to make that floor space that they currently have usable, this is the, it's unique. It's the only where, only place that they could do it. 
Right, but they, no, they could, but you see, Brian, they're, what they're getting at the end of the day is they're getting increased floor space in their building. That's what this is for. It's not, they're not doing this in order to just fill in space for an abstract reason. They're doing it because they want to, they have more space. Right. This is giving, no. So that's the purpose. And they did it in this way. But that's the benefit. Of, but I don't think, I would not agree to say they only came in to do, it was unique that they only did this to fill in the space because I don't think that's what they were doing. They wanted to increase their space and redesign what their building looks like. I actually think that they decreased their overall FAR, if I remember correctly. Yeah. I think you're right. They decreased their FAR. Yes, but they they but they did it, they redesigned their building. What they were doing is redesigning their house. Right. And when they decreased the benefit they the benefit they wanted from it was to increase it the size, correct? No, the benefit they wanted from it was to redesign the house. They they redesign the house to make the floor space that they have usable uh, in certain areas, like the dormers. And don't get me wrong, they added more in other places and they traded the garage space for it uh, that they're removing. Uh, so I don't think, you know, the benefit that they're seeking, I guess it's not homogenous. You know, uh, it can't just be uh, said that the only benefit they're looking for is in the dormer area. Um, although I do feel that that is, uh, that is a unique feature that they can't, um, that they can't replicate somewhere else. But then again, they added, they, they added more space in other areas. And they also, they never said, well, the only thing we want to do is fill in the dormers. And if we can't fill no, in the right. dormers, we don't want, we don't need to do this project. Um, they were redesigning the floor space and they decided this worked really well based on their, their very modern design. So, um, so I how can we, is there anything I can understand why Charlie wrote that? And I can understand that that's, that's what the applicant had said. Is there any way that we can say that differently, uh, to show that, you know, it is a benefit, uh, the, the redesign is a is a benefit is a unique benefit. I don't um, think it's unique, and I don't think about, it's a benefit. How, how about other other means of achieving the use of the? What I'm saying, what my concern is that they said to us that they couldn't that if they didn't do it this way. I mean, they said this that any other means for that. Um, if they did it in any other way, right, which implies they weren't intending just to do the dormer, it would increase the impervious surface or extend further or something like that. They said this. Well, now, is that in there? That's in there somewhere else but or he not? Says, well, but here's my concern with this pattern. The only reason I have a problem with this is other means for achieving the same benefit. Um, I guess it's okay. I forget. You could leave it. I'm not. I don't have a problem. I think. It's, I think it's clear. The applicants are seeking relief to remove the dormers and straighten the side walls to create increased livable space on the second floor. That's what they're doing. Increased yeah. livable space on the second floor and straighten the walls. That's exactly so we're good what with they're it? doing. Okay. Right. That's an A, and then B says that you know right. any other way would have a different impact. Right. Yeah. I think it's That's, fine. I, I yeah. think back when I my comment, and I think it's fine the way it is. Okay. By the way, when you're done with this area, I do want to go back to. Uh, I'll go back now so we can do it in order. So that okay, so so under under number one, you know, my biggest um, takeaway, uh, uh, you know, or 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 bit of personal deliberation on whether or not it has a detriment to nearby properties. Now we said that I believe on the the south side it was a uh, uh, very minimal. Uh, and we had no problem with it. But on the north side, one of the things that we were talking about is the fact that, uh, you know, the, the property there is not developed or it's speculative or, or this or that. And, and that really, it, you know, while all of that is true, um, I think we should consider the fact that any new build 
on that, uh, uh, you know, on, on the undeveloped property. It wouldn't, it wouldn't have Southern views anyway, because not only is this house there, but the house in 1280 is there. Um, and you know, I don't think that the requested variance is going to change uh, uh, that property's views one way or another. Uh, uh, you know, in addition, if somebody wanted to put up uh, large shrubs, they could, and they'd have even less, um, you know, feeling of space between between the properties. Uh, there really is no southern view um, from from either the undeveloped property or from 1240, uh, because again. Uh, you currently have a structure. They they have as of right uh, uh, the ability to go uh, up in the middle. Right. So but it the doesn't matter. Right aspect, uh, and and in addition to that, uh, and and I think it might be very relevant. Um, there's no shadowing from that property. Uh, you know the the sun goes east to west. It's not as if you're building something which is going to be uh, tall. And the sun is going to be hitting it in a way to throw shade on that property all day. That's not the orientation of these properties. Uh, you know, I just really wanted to see whether or not uh, there was going to be uh, any detriment to a nearby property or its value in terms of it being able to be developed. Um, and the more I I looked at it, the more I I, I do not feel that this specific project um, would would provide more detriment uh, than what's currently there. They, they don't have a view. Uh, they, they're already they're not increasing. Uh, they're not encroaching further into you know into the setback. Uh, they're not shadowing. Um, so I, I think well, if the other members agree, perhaps we could add uh, uh, some of that to number one. Well, I have for, for 1G, where it says the lot immediately to the north of the premises is vacant, I yes. added, and any speculative development on such lot would not be adversely impacted by the granting of the area variances because it does not have southerly views. I don't agree with that. I think that the way they designed their house, I would not want to say anything about that because I don't agree. I think that when they're designing the um, the the uh, their, their new the, the, that, that lot. Somebody's going to design a building on it, and when they design the building, they're going to design it based on what exists at the time. And because it went, to the extent that they design it based on the way this house is built constructed today, they will design it with one way, and they will have. Okay. They might have some views. They'll make it. They'll angle it in a certain way to have views. Whatever. They will do it differently if this building is built. So I do not want to say that it will not affect the development because I'm not sure that's correct. And I would never want to say something like but, that. But you could say that their development of the house next door is not going to be obstructed, or will not be impacted by this relatively minor I don't. I don't know if that's correct. I, as I'm saying, I think that it will be, but I don't think that's relevant. I think that. It, but no would you agree that it now. leaves them with they ample? They can design a building that okay. will be the appropriate building for the site. So then, then what you could say is that any future planning on that vacant property, if they ever like to build on it, can there will certainly be room for it to be built within the confines under the zoning code. I mean, it's not being- That's all that's right. Have right. I, now, have by, I, by the way, my point yeah. wasn't to deal with the speculative development of the property next door. My point is that this uh, uh, variance or this, this plan um, is not gonna add to any detriment. Right, because you currently don't have southerly views. Okay, uh, uh, that's good for for that area, about? and it will not increase shadowing on on the property. Uh, Won't the house if they build next door impact this this house? No. Okay. I mean, listen. 
I, I'm just trying to say, you're not, you know, obviously we said we're not going closer to the lot line. There is structure that already exists in this view line. And just because some of it is, the, the volume is now, you know, a, a, a little bit more there, it's, it's not going to decrease any views. Um, okay. Uh, you know, especially with the, the the fact that 1280 is is already the, looks like the same footprint as what they're trying to build, um, and it won't do shadowing. It, it may not be necessary. I just uh, uh, I don't know. It, it, was any just, input? it was just a little bit more depth that I went into uh, in trying to see whether or not it was going to cause a detriment to nearby properties. You can be somewhat conclusory in the findings, can't you? I mean, if you, if you ever have to litigate this, you have the facts. You got one of it. Yeah, and you also have the discussion this board just had. This is true. Um, you know about this sentence. Well, I think that it it it, it speaks it bodes well, but you have it in your G. I mean, the idea. I mean, there's nothing major. If someone's got an empty lot, they'll build within their reality. They'll build. Right. I, right. I really do think so. I mean, That's this does nothing. This does not inhibit or impede their ability to build a proper structure. Correct. I think you know, well, I, that it does. Right. Yeah, I and and I think that we do need to avoid things that people may try to prove yeah. us wrong on. Because no, I th I really do think that, that it's like this does not inhibit or impede somebody. Building on a vacant lot next to it. <laughs> you, yeah, I don't know. Whatever you think. Um, so are we leaving it as is? Uh, okay, uh, it as is. Leave it as is. As is. Because okay. the most definite thing is the fact that it's not going to be closer to the lot line. Yeah. Right, right. Next up. That's a fact. This is. Uh, anything else on this page, folks? Five? Um, on page, okay, so I would say, and to see, I wouldn't say, I don't think that sentence really mean, is meaning, I don't like it. The project will use the existing legal nonconformities. They don't use existing legal nonconformities. I think you should take that first sentence out well, and they are creating an additional nonconformity because they're putting more volume in it. So I would say go back here that, um, I would just take C out. I Joe, would you want to show that it's it's within the confines of that, right? I don't think it's needed for this one. We say it in the first one. I don't think it's necessary for the fact the benefits sought by the applicants cannot be achieved by some other method. The fact that they are not that they are not increasing the non-conforming or decreasing it has nothing to do with whether it can be achieved by some other method. So I don't think C is needed. I'm okay with taking it out because it's addressed in B above. Right. That was that's that's okay. Um, I'm sorry. What did you say, Charlie? I'm okay with taking it out because that okay. concept is addressed above in okay. subsection B. Now, what about what about F? Is that a statement that we can make? Yeah, we can't say the applicant stated that they. We can say that. You can say before submitting it, the, the applicant represented that prior to. Right. And yeah. that's fine. That's but fine. We can't say the applicants did it because we yeah. don't know they did it. Okay, Charlie? Yep. And wait, going back to D, D, I have my, the, my problem with D is the same as my problem with C, that the decreasing the existing for FAR. Um, floor area has nothing to do whether it can be achieved by some other method. So I would take out D also. Yeah, that's a draft in B above too. Okay. Um. <clears throat> okay. The formatting of the next one, just I just think you just should clarify because it was a little confusing to me, but I suppose I guess it's okay. So A was for the following reasons. A is not substantial because maybe instead of when considering the following factors, shouldn't we just make it simple? The 3.25 
foot minimum side yard variance for the southern property line is not substantial because. Okay. And make it really direct. Okay. And the same for B. Yeah. Um, and then I would take out the area variances would allow building within existing pre existing non conforming setback because that doesn't go to the issue of is this is this not substantial the fact that they're built and if you want to say that it will allow building i think we should say that the i mean the whole point here is the the total right this was they gave us all these numbers the total volume of the additional space that they are putting into the non-conforming side yard is only X square feet, and it was a small amount. I think that's what we need to put here. Okay, I agree. The fact that it, that too, the fact that it doesn't exceed the building height requirements is not relevant, so I would take that out. Uh, what section is that? Is that, that was to Romanet three under A. 3A Romanet 3. The area variances do not exceed the building height requirements. I would take that out. Does it tell you why the 3.25 minimum side yard variance is not substantial? It has nothing to do with the fact that it doesn't need a variance for height. Yeah, I just put it in there to express it under totality of the circumstances. Oh, I mean, then we should say it someplace, but it has nothing to do with, the, the, with that there. And mm -hmm. the same thing in the next one, I would take out the height thing because it's not relevant to these factors. I mean, we don't list all the things it doesn't do, and we don't list all the things it complies with. Yeah. So I'm not sure why we're listing that as something it complies with. We don't say it complies with um, with uh, lot coverage. We don't say that. We don't say any of the other things that it does not that it complies with. So I would take out the height because I don't think it's any more relevant than any other piece. So what are we leaving in in A? We're leaving in everything except. So we're leaving in right. what was two and four. We're leaving in two and four, correct? And, and we're adding, adding the number adding to how much? Footage. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Good. And then you should add the. I think you should add that square footage to go into the combined side yard too, because it's relevant to that one too. Yep, I already made that note. Okay, perfect. Um, then in four, I, I have a, I, I would take out the height again, but I have a real problem with your D, 4D, or what, sorry, what was 4E, because E? E, what was the E? The area variances are a type two and therefore statutorily do not have any significant environmental impacts. Mm, yeah. I would take that out because if I you would... put that in here, what you're saying is that for every single variance, we never have to consider um, this factor because of the type <laughs> two. And I don't think that's right. The fact that it's got an adverse effect doesn't mean that it has a significant adverse effect under secret. They're not the same thing. We could determine that something had an adverse effect on the neighbors, even if it's a type two. I would absolutely take out that last sentence. I think it's a real, real problem. Okay. Brian, you good? Yeah, that's fine. That's yeah, fine. Yeah, and yeah, trying true. to list, I can understand why it was done, but trying to list everything, um, you know, that we don't typically list in terms of justification is it's not necessary. I just don't know whether or not, um, you know what, if something, I don't know, if something comes up in the future, we can always throw that in. I don't think we should ever throw that in, Brian. No, if not in here, not in here. But in any of them, I don't think it should ever be thrown in because if we throw it in anywhere- Not, then not my point. Oh. I'm, it's not what I'm saying at all. I misunderstood you then. And I don't, yeah, and I don't want to go further with okay. my thoughts. I think Charlie understood. Okay. Um, I would take out height from five. And that's it. 
Okay. Um, now, if you if you want to say something about right, the what did you say about five? Sense, Brian, what did you say about five? I would take out. Oh, sorry, oh, six. Hi. It's under six. I, I misread where it was. My formatting is confused here. No, well, no, five. you're right. It's under five. Okay. Five C. The proposed improvements are within yeah. the building height restrictions. I would take that out. Now, I think, uh, Charlie, to go to your concern about saying something like that. I think if you want to say something that the building will comply in all other respects with the requirements of the village zoning code, we could put in a sentence like that. And that would cover everything, not just height. Okay. And I'm okay and, with doing something like that. Right. And that that could that could be in and of itself. Right. Which is which is good. I think that that's uh that's good to have in there. Charlie on five. Yes. It's not, it's not a, um, Self-created in an area variance is not an end all, right? That's correct. That's right in the statute. Right. Um, Actually, oh, oh, I know Charlie, what I want to say on this one, on I, five, shouldn't we? It doesn't the statute yeah. say, Charlie, that? Um, yeah, that's it, correct. Doesn't the statute say that something to the effect of just because it's self-created? Right. You, but, yeah, so that's I, why I was just commenting on that, that it's, it's not an annual point. under the statute. So right, you might want to make reference to it. We're not giving this less weight because they're building within an ex We're not giving it less weight because of these reasons. In part, we're giving it less weight because the statute says you give it less weight. But I think we need to say, however, in balancing the factors above, this is given, however, this is in considering the totality of the circumstances. And um, the totality of the size of the variance. Correct. See, I think it's the size of the variance, the statute, that makes that the minimus. And right. it's not like they're going to, you know, they're going the major, they're going all gung ho here. But within the pre existing non conforming area, it's fine. A, I like A. B is fine. No, no. My problem, David, is not that the stat we we give this less weight because the statute essentially says you give it less weight. I understand that. So you can't that. say this is given less weight because of these reasons. We're giving it less weight because the statute says we give it less weight. But these are the factors we consider. But in terms of weighting, the weighting is based on the statute. We don't give it less weight because they're building within a pre-existing non-conforming area. Okay. It's it's more like a question of what why are we giving it less weight? Well, no, but it is it is that is one of the reasons. No, but the way that Robin the way that Robin is describing it is I'm technically good. accurate. Okay, that's what I'm trying to say. Charlie, so you're good. Say, yeah, I'll use the language from the village, New York village. Right. Language. Good. And, and then and you can Charlie, say that in considering the totality, these are the considerations that made it, but it's not. Yeah. And Charlie, I think that that line that we had spoken about uh, in terms of meeting all other village codes uh, could be put um, on the end of number six uh, in, uh, in replacement for or within the building height requirements to the R20 district, you can say, you know, and is in compliance with all other, you know, aspects of the village code. Yeah, I'll use uh, that same language. Yeah, so that's so that's the I think that's the proper place to put this. Okay. Now, when when we go, be it further resolved, number two, uh, I I've seen this before. It shall complete construction with eighteen months. Um, is that? Oh, a number we're just coming up with because I, I, I have a house uh, 
right across from me, which has been under construction for two years, um, you know, is 18 months appropriate given, you know, uh, given this project or is that by code? That is language that has been in prior area, similar area variances for residential properties. We can change complete construction to commence construction, or whatever the board would like. There's something in the code, though. Let me look it up. There is something in the code about construction. I don't remember what it is, um, but but there are other things that we usually say in terms of be it. Oh no, never mind. Maybe we don't. Maybe I'm, I'm mixing up my. Um, hold on a second. <coughs> oh no, never mind. It's in the BF. I was looking at the wrong thing. Yeah. <coughs> so, do we want to say complete construction, or can we say we usually have said that they have? We've said this, and then we say unless extended. So basically, they have to come back. But I thought we were doing twenty-four months. I can't remember because uh, it used would... to say twelve months. It always said 12 months, and obviously that was What do we have here, 18? Yeah, I thought we had moved it to 24. Why don't you go to 24? You have a problem? Yeah, I'd, I'd be more comfortable with 24. Yeah, particularly, yeah. yeah. And I also, okay, yeah. I also think that under number four, mm -hmm. uh, we said, you know, applicant from complying with all other applicable village laws and regulations. Uh, do we want to make that more comprehensive? Do we want to say state, federal? I think we just take out the word village. I can put village, state, and federal laws and regulations. Or just no, I why, think why she's right. All applicable laws and regulations. She's right. Just take out village. Okay. Yeah. Don't qualify yeah. it. All right. Good. Yeah, we talked about that earlier. Less is more. Yeah. You could put that subject to some. <laughs> oh, oh, excuse me. Robin, you better get a cup of coffee. We got a lot more to go. Oh. Uh, got a huge presentation tomorrow. Oh, Just had to write a note to myself to remember to wear a suit and tie tomorrow. It's been a long time. <laughs> Well, listen, I, I just want to put it out there. I, I would at least like to try to make an attempt to close 1631, I mean, you know, to do the resolution on 1631 Winfield because of well, their hardship fine. request. Yes, fine. that's fine. Um, can we, can we, bef oh, never mind. We, we discussed that. Right. Okay. So, um, yeah, okay. Let's do 1631 and then let's. Well, so on this one, hold on. What I would, given the time, because we're way past the time, we're now at the time stage. What I would suggest we do is, or consider is, vote on it, and then with the, but the revisions, subject to all the revisions, and they be circulated so that everybody has a few days to, to confirm that they reflect what we voted on. All right? That's okay, because I think we need to look at it again. I think so. But I think we can vote to say we're approving it as modified and then say in further that the modified version will be circulated. I don't think we need to put that in the resolution. No, okay, we don't. Fine. You're right. You're right. I won't sign it in two days. Two, a couple of minutes. <laughs> Take it. All right. I think so. All right. So is there a motion on this? Oh, I'll move it. I'll move to adopt it. I'll move for the resolution as revised during our discussion and deliberation of the state. Okay, I'll second it. Okay, Robin? Yes. Oh, wait, I, I just want, I wanted to say one thing. I had some, un, I had, I just, because, you know, at the last meeting and, and figure out I'd been, inter, you know, I had some concerns about what, how I was going to vote, but I realized that at the end of the day, our variance is really limited to what the statute tells us we can consider. So based on that, I think this is we have to does that mean you vote yes yes okay brian is explaining yeah and and the same explanation for me it's simply we're reviewing this project as uh, uh as given to us um and you know based on and and 
if it changes, then you know our our approval is worth nothing. Uh, but uh, oh, in terms of what this project is proposing, uh, I vote yes. I yeah I I think it's not a major thing. I think it's been very very carefully examined by the neighbors by the people. I think applying the legal standards. I mean it's otherwise the this is what variances are for. And as far as the unknowns, I mean, if they decide not to build it, they won't build it. If they decide there are other issues, they'll deal with it. So I'll vote yes. Okay. Thank you. It's the best. All right, and you'll send it for, so we can review it for filing, correct? Thank you. We'll go from there. All right, now the next matter is one second resolutions, I have this. Uh, uh, Brian suggested we do Winfield. That's fine. Winfield is fine. Winfield. Some, one day remind me. Comments, of... I had some comments on the resolution. Yeah, this, okay, this is a uh, 08 AV 22. Yeah, Go ahead, Rob. Yeah. Um, I have to read my, my notes. Oh, also, you got here the board closed its hearing on May 5, two, is that one it did? Yeah, I guess it did. Well, yeah, no, it, actually, this is what I had remembered. You yeah. have to take out the whereas, the second to last whereas clause yeah. on the second page because we did not deliberate on May. Right, 31st. the May. That's what I did. I, 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 or I, or yeah. perhaps you should you should know just change that date to June second. Are yeah. we talking about the last resolution or this resolution? We're no, we're talking about Winfield six thirty one Winfield oh, Avenue. Right, right. says May thirty first. Good There's morning, Charles. <laughs> and soon we'll say that with meaning. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, but I'm going back to page one. Yeah. Okay. Starts at the very beginning. So the, the uh, next to last whereas clause on page one says, whereas the proposed addition, it's the same issue I had on the other one, within the existing side yard nonconformance. But if it is not, if it is within the existing nonconformance, then it doesn't need a variance. It's because it's increasing the um, the nonconformance because we're putting more footprint in the nonconforming um, side yard, even though we're not reducing the amount of that side yard further. The what whereas clause of that? I'm sorry, I just pulled up. It's the, the next to last whereas clause on page one. Okay. Right, it's not that it's within, it's that it's, you know, it's the whole concept of they are increasing. They're not increasing the non-conformance, but they are building new footprint in there. They're right, so, in, so instead of and within, you have to say, it does not encroach further into the existing side yard. Non-conform, oh no, actually that's not true, is it? I can use the same language from the first one we did where it says it does not decrease. Right. Um, it is putting it, more foot. I think it needs to be clear. It's adding more footprint within the, um, the, the, the depth of the existing of the side yard nonconformance or something like that, whatever it is. Because that's what okay. it's doing. It's putting more footprint in there. OK. Um, now, the first whereas clause on the next page says, for the proposed addition includes an area one foot. This was very confusing. Yeah, but you figured it out. The last, last thing we did, you figured it out because we had all of the, uh, all of the details. I think it was uh, four feet by 1.6. What was it, Charlie? Yeah, you have. Yes, it was four feet by 1.6 inch because you have. You um, figured out the sliver, Robin. Right. But what I'm saying is it's just the language doesn't work. It includes okay. an area one foot six inches in length that is within. I mean, that's confusing. That doesn't, and even if I know what this is, I didn't understand that is my point. I just okay. think you need to rewrite that to be clearer on what it's doing, Charlie. OK. And again, it's the same thing within the existing side yard nonconformities. It, it isn't that it's within, it, it is and it isn't. I mean, it has to make it clear they're putting more footprint in the in their non side non-conforming side yard. So they are increasing that. Okay. Um, 
And just so you know, a couple of years ago, I'm pretty, as I recall, I don't remember any of the details of the project. We actually turned one down that was doing this, I think, because um, even though it was in the, you know, within the same side yard, they were putting a lot of footprint there and it was in a portion that was very, that was right next to the neighbor and was a problem because it was so close to the neighbor in that area. It was a big issue. So the mere fact that it was within the, it didn't extend further, it didn't decrease the side yard nonconformance, didn't, wasn't the issue. You know, the point is, it is still increasing the amount within that side yard. They're putting more footprint in there. That's relevant. I mean, you sort of treat it as if that's not relevant, but it is relevant. Okay. Um, okay. Um, the area variance, two foot area variance along the southerly side above the existing garage within the existing single side yard setback as yeah, the sentence are no greater than the existing nonconformities, but they are, are it, you have to somehow incorporate into this next war as close that lists the variants where they are increasing the footprint within that nonconformance, but it isn't, but it's a small amount and it isn't having a detrimental impact. I mean, that's the point. It's not very much and it's a small amount. Okay. Then my the other comment is on page. Uh, you don't have page numbers on this. It's the it's the same. Whereas after you have the type two at the bottom of whatever page that is, uh, then the next page begins. Whereas the board recognizes the following. I had the same issue as I did on that other, which is not recognizing the following. It's making findings, and you should do what you did in the Flagler variance resolution, which is. Uh, based on the above, you know, or whatever. And now, therefore, the board makes the following findings. Right, using the code language. Yeah. Yep. I'll move that. Yeah. And so then at the end of one, it says, moreover, the roof will not exceed the height. I would take that out. I don't think it's relevant. Uh, where was that? Sorry, I was still... The last sentence on number, on the first finding. Oh, yeah, that was what you were referencing earlier. Yeah, now that should come out. Um, then number two says, because of the size and configuration of the premises, um, the premise, you're talking, it's not the premises, the premises is a pretty standard lot. It's because of the size and configuration of the existing building on the premises. Okay, yes. Yeah. Um, then number three, the area variants are not substantial because they do not increase the pre-existing nonconformity. That's not why they're not substantial. They're not substantial because it's a small area. And it, it does, and it, area, and it does not, being... and it does not increase uh, the distance at a lot line. Right, but the main issue is it's not a lot of space that it's no, doing you, that. No, it's de minimis. Yeah. yeah, it's the same comment that we've kind yeah. of yeah. been battling all night. Right. Then? Well, number four, I don't know whether or not you want to, you know, include it. Now, obviously, you know, are the variances self-created by the applicant? I, I think perhaps we should note somewhere, uh, you know, perhaps we could say while the area variances are self-created by the applicants, it should be noted, uh, you know, that, that, that the reconstruction was required by FEMA uh, to move all living space above the flood. Oh, that's plane. good. That's good, Brian. I think that's what you should say here instead of what, yeah. what he says. That's good. Yeah, I, I think you should put it in there because, um, okay. you know, it gives a lot of weight to this. Yeah, that's very These very applicants, good. had the flood not come, they wouldn't have done anything. So and my, should, that should be noted, the reconstruction was required by FEMA, and then I missed what you said after that. So to I move think. all living space above the floodplain. Okay, yeah, that's what I thought. And you can make that sound more legit if you want. Um, I, my, my other comment on these findings is there are five findings. We only have four here. So we need the fifth, the fourth finding, the fifth finding. Oh. 
So that is um, impact to the environmental conditions of the neighborhood. I would say, you know, they're, uh, I mean, they are putting more um, impervious surface. So. Well, I think, I, I think you'd be better off saying uh, that uh, it is improving uh, uh, that's fine. Health, safety, and welfare, uh, you know, of the individuals living within the floodplain, you know, also, uh, you know, what happens with these flood houses, uh, you know, if you don't, if you don't move the living area and the flood comes up, it can hit the wires, it can hit the gas lines, you could have a fire. Uh, so it's significantly improving the health, welfare, and safety of not only the occupants, but uh, the surrounding neighbors. Perfect. Charlie, put what, put what Brian said in it. <laughs> Got it. That was good. That's right. Okay, can we vote? Well, I'm just going to take okay. that on the be it further resolved, uh, number five. I'm going to take out the word village. Yeah. Got a motion, Josh? I move to adopt it as revised. Second. Okay. I'll second it. Okay, Brian. Yes. Robin. Yes. Yes. All right. It is now eleven forty-nine. We is Madison a pressing one? I've just closed. Oh, it, it's a. I don't know. That's. I think it has some complicated details in terms of what variances we want to provide. I want to go home. <laughs> All right. You're home. Hmm. Well, you know what I mean. All right. So I'll find out about a July meeting. Was there something else we had to take up tonight, David, on litigation or something? There's an Article 78, right? Uh, yes, there is. And if you want to take it up, we should do so in executive session. Well, can you just tell you what it is, or we don't need to do more than that right now, do we? Um, no. So there was. No I mean, we're not. You're not giving away secret arguments and legal positions. No, I'll right? keep it brief. There is an Article 78 filed by the applicants. That was 524 Waverly. It was related to the outdoor storage. All oh, um, right, right, right. Essentially, the petition asserts um, that it would have been appropriate as an area variance. Uh, our firm has been retained to handle the litigation. I believe papers and the record are due on June 20th. I had a question on this. I, I, I don't know if it's inappropriate. I don't care about the openness. They're going to see your papers anyway. But isn't there a failure to exhaust? So we should discuss this in the executive okay. session. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, can we do that now? Not really. No, I guess not. Forget it. If we need to do something before June twentieth, then we need to do it now. How do we? Can we? Can we get rid of the executive session? Can't we? Yeah, our office just got retained, and we have our land use litigators reviewing the record. Um, so we could schedule another time to have an executive session, and they could be involved, or we could do it now. Whatever you would like to do. That that might be better, and and you know, Greta could also probably be you know if we could coordinate. It doesn't have to take that much time either. And it's a Zoom meeting, and assuming we, and that one I think we could do by Zoom anyway, because it's not a hearing, it's just a public meeting. Charlie, right. am I right based on? Well, we have to move for legislation, but we would just probably likely have to open up a public meeting, immediately go into executive session, come out of executive session, close the public meeting. Oh, we can, oh, I see. All right. So we notice a public hearing. No, you would just have to post an agenda, put it on the website as soon and as the agenda will be executive, executive session. session. Discuss pending litigation. All right. All right, Charlie, fine. Just send me an email tomorrow with a couple of dates. I mean, does it matter? I mean, people around for the next week or so, next 10 days? Yes. For bad time. Yeah. All right. Take yeah, a couple yeah. of I just, I'm just curious. Can you, you know what you could do, Sean? Can you email us a copy of the petition? Is it lengthy? 
Uh, I think it's been it was forwarded to all the board members, but no, I can the, but I can send it around. Oh, again. okay. No, then I probably did look at it, just didn't. Yeah, it, this is the one where we basically said you, it's it's a it's a use variant. You're gonna need a use variance, right? Yeah, and we can take it up in executive session too once we get a date. All right, this is, um, and who's representing them? I believe it is Mr. Noto. Right. Yeah, that's an interesting one. Good. All right, so. Um, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Eh, let's adjourn. deliberate. All in favor, hang up, all in. I'll vote yes. Does I have Chair. a question for you? I'll leave you with this. Do you really need a second? Because I don't think you ever need a second on a motion on a, on a variance. Charlie, did you need something? I I need something. This oh, Dennis. Stuff. So oh. Waverly will not be discussed. Madison will not be discussed. Um, Winfield, did um, did we go over Winfield? Yeah, we did. Yes. Yeah, you were babysitting, <laughs> my friend. No, no, no. I believe me. I'm not even near my kids right now. I can't imagine. We've, yeah, we're, we approved we're, we're that we approved it. Okay, okay. Because I just saw that Richard disconnected now. That made me curious. I'm like, why was he still on? Because I, I could have sworn we went through it. I don't know if it was get, being kicked back to the end of the meeting, but he just disconnected not even three minutes ago. He just left the meeting as an attendee. Because I mean, we um, approved it, so he's done. Yeah, I know, but he, he left three minutes ago. I mean, it was spoken about a while before. So, okay, yeah, that's great. Ago. All right. Yeah, thank you. Be well, have a happy Dennis. Be well. There's a motion to adjourn. There's a second, then all in favor, leave. Aye. Okay. Aye. Thanks, good night, everybody. Aye. All right, we'll talk good about, night. and Charlie, I'll good talk morning. to you. Soon. We'll, we'll Almost good morning. Yeah. Good morning. Take care. <laughs>